That's what right. I've what's going on? I, I don't know what what's the going hell? On. I don't know what's going on. My Ladies going. and gentlemen, we are experiencing some very weird technical difficulties, and this is why you should always try to come to a live show. Right, I'm going to say out of this and come back in again, right? All right, give it that a shot. Uh, I knew we were expecting some weird anomalies due to the solar storms bringing back the auroras, but I don't know what the hell. It, Chris, screen, it's been weird. So, how's everybody been doing? We got Lawrence, we got Dots, we got Dots T. Tatiana, I hope everybody is doing well. No, I didn't. I'm still here. Um, okay. I'm going to have to shut the computer down and turn it back on again. So you're going to get okay. up. Okay. Well, Drew, we would love to be able to breaking stuff. Hey, hey. Alan. How are you, my friend? Maul the Mystical is apparently not welcome on the show tonight. So, he's trying to figure that shit out. Hi, Chris. (laughs) Hi, Dakota and the ghost of Chris. Yeah. After all the interference I had trying to record the interview with Abigail, man, and if anybody... Here hasn't gone seen that made an appearance on the grounded star seed channel very g- good discussion um i was kind of impressed because i'll be honest with, i did that one slightly sleep deprived dawn how are you uh well tonight initially we were talk i'm gonna go into uh communication In regards to, you know, when it comes to the dead and potentially, you know, other beings trying to communicate us through dream state. So, I don't know. I'm not exactly sure what the heck is going on. And Chris is kind of thick headed when it comes to trying to figure out how to fix stuff. So, we'll see if he's able to get back. Um, so funny you saw me taking a big yeah i i remember you holding up the camera wait you're on the wrong side what let's fix this that is we have to turn the computer off and back on again aliens i blame the aliens aliens hello everybody how are you all I honestly don't know what we're doing there. Weird. That that weird. was weird. I've never seen it do that before. Hey, Tina, it's long time no see. Hey, everybody, it's good to see you all there. I was trying to fix it. Is it my, my laptop updated the night to the new Windows? Uh, yeah. Yeah, and I never restarted some... it. Oh, well, that would do it. No, yeah. I was just gonna say, uh. Some of the individuals I follow who try to help people recover their uh, their accounts after they've been hacked notice that they've been getting a lot of people reporting that their Microsoft Outlook accounts have been hijacked as well as everything tied to those. I haven't seen mm-hmm. any official statements come out from Microsoft, but just saying, it does seem like there's something going on. I go up. Uh... It was quite a big update the night, the night at 10. At 10, I had about half an hour for it to update. And then yeah. I had to install it. So maybe it's something they've brought out. Because I had this one yesterday, because obviously I look after Lisa Fry's uh, YouTube channel. So I went in yesterday. I see she got a, a strike. No a strike on her channel, but she got hungry for that other music she's got. I, I yeah. told her a possible fix for that. Did you? Well, you did, I... didn't you? That's right. All right. Yeah, she uh, yeah. uses Canva to edit her videos, and there's a way. Did she tell? 
the account. You should. She told me it was copyright free. It was fine. It said on the website where she got it for. It was absolutely fine to use on YouTube. Dude, I've been flagged for using my own music. Shit, I've composed on YouTube. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. I was like, I've been I've been flagged for using my own music stuff. I wrote and produced and composed all myself, and it was yelling at me like, "Fuck you, Google." I know it's like it's mad. Facebook's been a pain in the ass towards me to see how I've got the, the Ghost Squad Scotland f- Facebook page. Are we going out to there the new? Uh, we should be. Well, it says it wanted my profile that's connected to that to be set in professional mode, but my, my profile has been set in professional mode. But they're still saying when I go to stream for StreamYard that it should be set in professional mode. Plus, I couldn't stream the day. See, see when I went to do my tarot card readings for everybody. I went to a Galactic Stardust. I went to stream, and it says, I'm sorry, we're, we're experiencing an unusual high number of uh, people streaming right now. You'll have to wait till after. And I had to keep doing it. I had to keep hitting it and waiting and waiting and waiting. Eventually, it let me in. Usual absolute madness. Do you like the YouTube sign? Look, YouTube sent me that, everybody. What do you think? Yeah. I can't get anywhere into this space. It seems to be getting like weird and weird. I'm feared to touch it in case it all just like collapses or in a bit, man. I don't know, man. I was like, I have never seen your camera go like that. I'm usually the one that's having the most issues. It's the weirdness. The weirdness. They're coming, I mean, but it's we're doomed. I mean, when we were, we're when I was recording that interview that I did just that's recently, right. I was even just having to purposely stop because I I could tell that. We were starting to glitch out, and I'm just like, okay, I'm just going to stop so none of the story gets messed up. <laughs> well, I'm going to say, I'm going to say this. You, the person that had you on actually pronounced my name correctly. I was very impressed with that. Yes. So many people, I know there's not many people who pronounce my name correctly. Aye. It's very true. Aye, I know. I mean, yeah. getting this. He was up the hills. This is popping up in my screen now. There's a weird window popping up in my screen now. Why is Messenger popping up now? Getting started. Messenger. Camera on. Honestly, what kind of websites have you been now. visiting, Christopher? I'll only go to the websites using my phone. It's more secure that way. You know Apple devices are more secure that way. Not since Steve Jobs died. Uh, Oh, Christopher, can you please try and say my name? That's just mean. Bucks. Hey, right, here we go. <clears throat> what is that? It's, you did it to me first, and then I'll, then I'll, and then I'll, I'll try it. There you go. Uh, go on, you go. Go on. Are we talking your real name? Or are you talking your username? What's a real name? That's what I want to know. That her so, real name's Don. Yeah, right, just want... So, Right, Don, right, Don, obviously I can say Don. You know, Don's easy to say. Soldiers Voice 4. For what else? Well, that's what I can see. All oh, right, sorry. Soldiers it's on, Voice it's on the screen. Or Life. Soldiers for Voice for Life. Yeah. Eh, eh, ye of little faith. I may be a crazy... Sc- oh, did you see Scotland get beat on their football? The Yesterday, what? the big football, the football, the football. It's a, it's a round object, and they kick it about this green field. No, Scotland you, get beat I, by Germany five 0 It sounded like you said the flipper. The, I, well, the way the way they're gone, they're absolutely terrible. You know, son of the naked Bigfoot, Pete is in the room. Chris, have you been ordering that all natural ball juice from hey. that North Korean website? Well, what? Pete, it's the one that it's, that it's that bloody link that you gave me for making it ten times bigger oh. than it should be. Yeah, then none of that stuff actually works. But should we announce what's been oh. added to oh, one I, of the Pete our big bald and bonkers merch stores? I think Pete should endorse it for us. We need to send something to Pete. Okay, to... there, there's a little bit of a backstory, so. We've had some people already go to submit to for the anthology that we were talking about last week. So 
we got to talking with some of them, and apparently, individuals who have never heard of the show before thought Bald and Bonkers was a hair restoration company. Yeah, maybe they're no rhyme. Where's, where's, where's my toupee? Here we go. What do you think of that, Pete? What do you think, ladies? You look like a knobhead. I know. I know. I look like a complete knobhead. But look at that. I ain't going to look as lovely. You know, to the side there. Aye, man. You look like a complete fucking knobhead. Anyway. So 100%. So classic. anyway, going back to the story. So mm-hmm. I thought, you know, there's a lot of uh, websites where you can, like, design your own merch. You know, you can put out your own coffee brands. So, I have officially added to the Bald and Bonkers Printify store. Now, I will state that due to, I believe it's something to do with customs, it can only be sent out in the U.S. Mm. That's just one drawback. Mm. So, Dots, I know you were looking forward to it, man, but sorry. Pete, Pete can endorse it on his TikTok for us. We have now Bald and Bonkers Hair Growth Tonic. Mm-hmm. And you can and tell it works minute. 100%. <laughs> yeah, right. And I, you know, just here, just to that, trying to get it up on the screen here so I we can show you. And see if anything will decide to work with me. God damn it. Eh, oh. come on, you piece oh, they, of junk. Open windows. So they open windows on the strange sites that you've got open there. We need the open windows, man. It's been hot over here. Mm. It's not been that out here in the UK. I think we've got like global cooling, you know, actually. Uh, it's actually been kind of cool today, but ugh, think about mm. running away to the mountains and not coming back. Mm. Come on, load. Bring it up, man. Bring it up. Is, uh, is it? Get it up. I can't see it yet. Oh, you! F- Did you just say get it up? Huh? Why? Why no? Get it up. Bring it up. It's, it's look, Pete's. Uh, look, Pete's excited in the chat. See, he's wanting some. Uh, would you call it ointment or whatever it is? It comes in. Oh, look, my God, ladies and gentlemen, he has been kicked. It's now Dakota's time to be kicked, you know? But honestly, guys, just wait till you see this. It's, it's really funny. Like you're getting old. It's, it's harms. It harms. It's just getting you close to it. What? I'm, I'm nearly 50. I'm 42. I'll be 50, uh, 43 this year. Just because you know? you're 42 doesn't mean you have all the answers in the universe. Yeah, I'm older than you. Closer to God. I'm taller. Mm, that's very true. That's very true. But then if you could think of it being dimensional, it could be standing in front of you, you know? Oh, it's not wanting to work. God damn it. Okay, we're going to have to go. The... Why don't you just screen share? In a moment. Can you get help anybody, ladies and gentlemen? Terrible. Good help! Good help! I'm the one that runs this company, you <laughs> son of a bitch! Hey, no, don't you stop that bullshit! Stuff? You... I'm looking forward to tonight's discussion because we're talking about the dream world and strange things tonight, guys. But obviously, <laughs> once he manages to get it up, we'll be able to talk about this, you know? Well, why don't as long you as I don't start there. talking about clapping gators or anything like that, it'll be fine. You know? We also have clapping gator merch in the stores. There you go. Dutch, you can get yourself some clapping gators. You should be able to get that in Ireland, yes. Yeah. Uh, why are you wanting to de- disagree? Did I was looking forward to this. Was, as long as it's not got me with eating a banana in the front of you, you know. Hey, but I, hey I told you, I don't I, have that picture saved, you dumb. I, have, I was going to send it to you. Anyway, okay, here we go. Bald and Buckers hair growth tonic. Can I ask you something? Who's that guy meant to be in the front of that? Because it's no any of us. Be truthful. Well, 
Well, Dots was one of the people that was telling me that uh, someone he knows thought Bald and Bonkers was a hair restoration company. And, you know, figure oh. when we first got to see his face, our, our first thought was how much he looks like, uh, you know, Bruce Springsteen. So I told the AI generator, Bruce Springsteen with long blonde hair. And that's what made, got made. Dear Jesus, help me. See, Lord, save me for this terrible demean. You grow your hair, we make you lose it? Yeah. Pete, that makes me wonder what you're actually into at night. After you finish watching YouTube, you can tell he goes on to some strange sites. Uh, anyway, I think we screwed around enough oh, time. So, Chris, I was wanting to ask, why do you want to go into this topic? I, I think just it's something we've done quick, before, but... I, I think, it, I mean, like, I, I thought it would be an interesting topic, right? I mean... Look, I, the dream world is, is something that we don't usually talk about. Just my phone's doing something weird there. But it's, it's something that we don't really talk about. And I mean, the came when Mike used to come on the show, we used to talk about the dream world and how he used to utilise the dream world. And then I had a really weird experience on Tuesday night coming into Wednesday, which Pete in the chat kens all about, and uh, Lisa kens about, and you ken about. But it's like... It's something that we don't really talk about, really, is like dream visitation and dreams to the... the well, think about it. You, you the aliens raise it to come and see you sometimes, right? The day you utilise the, what do you call it, the dream world to do what they want to do, yeah. right? Whereas also, whereas the, the paranormal world, the lost people that have died and stuff like that, also use it to travel, to utilise... Because there'll be people with, with zero psychic skills. I know everybody's psychic, but some of them have not opened up to that. And they'll have a visit. They'll have a visitation dream that will be so real. Can you know I mean? And they'll be like, "How is that possible?" And they didn't believe in that. What's, what's uh, Pete saying? Dream walking can be either very good or very horrifying. I bet you can. Oh yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. I was just, I mean, it's interesting because I've had a lot of waking dream experiences. That what happened to me, I'm not going to into it fully because it is a lot of it's personal, but it felt so real. Mm-hmm. I remember looking over, I've got the Alexa device right next to me, and I looked over and it was like half past three in the morning, and then I went back to the dream world, and I was in this beautiful place. I'll not say who was there and stuff like that, but it was in this beautiful place, and then I, I like blanked out again and I looked at the clock and it was like half past five. But only for me, it was only like like maybe a couple of seconds had passed. And when I shut my eyes again, it was all like multicolored. No, I wasn't taking it. It was all like multicolored and stuff like that. Right. Anyway. What? And then I was away. I was I was away to that place again. But it was the same vivid dream and it was so flipping real that's right Dots you can because you get astro you get astro projection on that can you tell you can actually get into a stay say what you got meditation where you can go to your body and you can go anywhere you want what happened it literally just felt like somebody was just brushing their hand against my neck like that like this mm. Mike if it's you do it again <laughs> alright hold on hold on on. I had this on during the interview. Where did I, where did I fucking put it? Wow. God, I lose my I lose my own head if it wasn't screwed on. No, yeah. I had I had my EMF. Yeah. Now you should maybe put it on. There we are. I finally put a fresh battery in this. I, I'm going. I'm going to say this, uh, and it, it's true what Pete said to me the other night. Right, I asked him about this because I can't. Pete's he kens what he's talking about. And he was talking about if you're really unwell and you're close to death, mm-hmm. you can you can like use it to like basically go to a different dimension kind of thing. I, I've not been well, guys. I've I've had a lot. I need to go for an MRI and all that through the week, and I've been really, 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 really sick. And I still am. I'm taking crazy stuff. I'm taking stuff. Get I mean, I'm to take it easy in case I take a stroke and die or something like that. But never mind that. 
It's a story for another time, as Mike would say. But that night I felt horrendous. That night I felt horrendous. And I think that triggered something in me and it teared me somewhere. What's that? So they put dad used to have to take herbal mixtures to dream walk, but he got good at it that he could induce it by eye. I bet you could. I've seen your dad doing his videos and wow. That's all I'm going to say. Mm. You know, so what's your opinion on it, Dakota? There's a number of different factors you have to take into consider it. Like how Lawrence is saying, it all depends on what's your mind that it can be influenced. Sometimes, mm -hmm. maybe if you had a uh, recent death with, with mm -hmm. a loved one, especially if it's a particularly traumatic situation, I you know probably health reasons or mm -hmm. you know something truly horrific happened to them. There could be a part of you that subconsciously tries to call out to these individuals, or in some cases, it doesn't even have to be a death related. It just it could be someone you legitimately miss, and See. that can sometimes create a psychic link. Mm -hmm. The brain waves in dream state for usually, usually it's only for a few fractions of a second when it happens in most people, but. The brain waves that are particularly active in dream state. Oh. Have we lost Dakota? Ladies they and gentlemen. have also been doing oh, psychic episodes. That was weird. That was weird. What just happened there? You froze for a millisecond for me. Come to Christ, you're interrupting me, you shame of a bitch. So, what all did you fucking hear? I'm joking, people. Come on, let's go. I'm, sli I'm, sli I'm slightly sleep deprived, so you might just see a little bit of goofy Dakota today. But anyway, mm. and it, it is really interesting where this happens because, say, like Don Soldier's voice just mentioned, you also had the phenomenon of prophetic dreams mm -hmm. where you can have a dream, think, wow, that was awfully weird. Then a little bit later, maybe the next day, maybe a little bit down mm -hmm. the line, things will play out. In my experience, not always in exact detail, but still, they would play out exact, almost exactly like they were in the dream. It goes to make you wonder, why does that happen? It maybe it's something... always seem to be anything. It, you know, you would think. Maybe it would be some sort of high energy event, something that would definitely cause a lot of emotion, a lot of stress, heart race, hearts racing. Like the several reports that come out of individuals who were supposed to be, ironically, this is episode 911, uh, <laughs> who were supposed to be for some reason, for some reason or another. At the Twin Towers at the time mm -hmm. of 9-11. There's several individuals who have had strange circumstances that directed them away. They were supposed to be, either be in those in, in that building or on those planes. I know some police officers who were supposed to be on those planes. Mm -hmm. I've heard a bit that. And they also mm -hmm. say that a lot of those souls are have been reincarnating. So they're, so they're coming back. But it, it makes you wonder, too, if it's something that's built into everybody to help them when times are difficult. A stress-related response. Aye, like a stress... It's not the first time it's happened to me. It's happened to me three times in my life. It's happened to me... No. <laughs> four times in my life. It's happened to me four times in my life. Amateur. Anyway. It's only happened... Right, I've I've done the dream... I've moved the dream walking. I've done the, the out-of-body stuff. I've done the... The you can see your body and you get to the end of your street and you can go places and stuff like that. I've done that. I've experienced that. But I'm talking about when I'm lying in my bed, when I go to sleep at night and you're no well. I've experienced things and it's always... I, I had COVID last year. Remember about this time? I had COVID. I thought I was going to die. Honestly, I felt absolutely diabolical, right? And I had a very vivid dream of this church and into this church, and in the church was all my dead relatives. 
right? And the, and they tell me, they says, listen, you've got to be all right. And I can remember it to this day, to this very day, everything that happened. I woke up and I, about a week later, I get better, right? It happened again the other night there. It's happened in the past, which I'll not talk about because it was kind of traumatic things that happened to me. Um, where it brought it on. But I'm thinking it's maybe something that's subconsciously built into the human brain. Maybe it's not just the human brain. Maybe it's animals. Hey, you don't know what animals dream about. You see them lying there twitching away and all that kind of stuff when they're, when they're, when they're, when they're sleeping. You don't know if it's only us that experiences this. Actually. In theory, there's a couple of different things. You take into consideration like reports out of situations like Project Stargate, where mm-hmm. governments, it, it, this one focuses mainly on the U.S., but other governments in the world are just as guilty of trying to experiment it for purposes of espionage. And Dots could probably write a novel on mm-hmm. how much he knows about this type of stuff. But it has been noted on several occasions that there are trauma related response awakenings to psychic ability where either someone's going through a particularly rough time they're in a toxic environment they're in an abusive relationships or as also noted in certain cases where you have like uh, what's that term i'm thinking of uh it's like sudden savant syndrome or something like that, mm-hmm. that. where for some reason mm-hmm. someone takes a blow to the head mm-hmm. and all of a sudden they gain some sort of new ability can, out, of, out the of piano the, uh, they can play the they piano, can play like or, piano yeah. they can be able to speak a language of some place they've had no exposure to in their life they may even pick up new accents things like that when it comes to certain psychic ability, maybe there is sort of a trauma related response to where if it's a stressful enough situation and someone has some sort of disposition to psychic ability, mm-hmm. it could manifest. You go into some UFO reports, there's individuals. Um, I know no one who's all in the audience right now, Jean Charles Moyen, it, no. he's a prime example, but there's a, quite a few others. Where they, for some reason, something spooked individuals so bad that they literally teleported away from a situation, like something out of X Men. See, I'm I'm going to say this to know, and obviously you'll know this to quote and everybody in the chat. What you will know this that I do think the dream world doesn't just the dream world. I think it's so much more, right? The dream world is like a doorway to a different world. And I think when you when you die, when you pass away, you use the dream world to cross sometimes. Because you've heard about people who go to their beds and they fall asleep and they never wake up and stuff like that. But I do think things can come through the doorway too. And you, it was weird because when I was having that experience on Tuesday to get into Wednesday, it was like a door was in front of me. And the guy walked back from me, whoever it was, the guy walked back and says, I have to close this door now because if I don't, you'll be followed. That's what it said to me. That's what it subconsciously said to me. This door has to be closed. Right? So I do think it's no, the dream world isn't just a dream world. I think it's like it's used for so many things. It's used for visitations. I think that's how spirits get about who knows what the dream world does? Because when you die, when you die, they say the brain, how long does the brain live on after you're dead? What is it? For a few minutes. At right, least. For a few minutes, right. Well, you look at that dream that I had. A couple of seconds was like four hours for me. Mm-hmm. But you see how you see how time doesn't work in the dream state. It's different. It's totally di- different. So it makes you wonder what is what else the dream world, what else is lurking in the dream world, what else that can, what other places can that take you to? Because I've seen some amazing, strange things in my life, only in my dreams, weird things. But I came with you and I came with a lot of people in the chat, you have all experienced like UFO things. I, I, I did at first experience UFO stuff, I blame him for that. And I did see his kids and stuff like that and 
I did explain, I did see that at first, but then it started opening the door for me. And I started traveling there. And I started seeing these beautiful places. I mean, guys, you, you have no fucking idea. Right? I'm talking, I'm talking beautiful mountains and scenery with flowers and your bare feet and there's waterfalls and there's thousands of people wandering about, but you seem to know everybody, but they know you and they all wave back at you and you don't know who they are. Do you get me where I'm going with this kind of stuff? That's what I mostly experience now. I experience more the spiritual side, the ghost, the spirit side of stuff. That's why I do the tarot card readings. That's why I do that, mostly ghost stuff. But when I first met Dakota, I had some crazy dreams. I had some just weird, downright weird dreams, eh? these weird places, and it wasn't that. It, it was totally different. It was it was somewhere else, and it wasn't eh? like the afterlife. It was somewhere else. That's what I'm going to say. There you go. There's a couple different things. In regards to know what you're saying, how the dream world may actually be connected to the spirit realms and all that. How do I put this? In many ways, the human mind, even at moments where of most minimal activity can be considered its own universe. Yeah. In, in mm-hmm. many ways. And when you actually look at the, a lot of the structures of the human mind compared to a lot of the structures within creation itself, there are very similar patterns you do see. And there's even certain theories out there that the universe, the stars, the planets, they all have form, some form of consciousness tied, tied to them. Yeah. And if you know how to work things, you can freely travel. Yes. You can, you can technically use it as a teleportation. Because like I said, the brain waves associated with astral traveling are also present in certain depths of stream state right about right where REM sleep starts to happen. Yeah. So it technically it is possible. One thing there's uh one show supernatural. I remember uh Michelle Ruse started to quote it a little bit when we had her on. I hope I said her last name correctly. But uh and the basic concept behind that television show was Basically, that, that there was nothing focused on American kind of lore when it comes. Yeah. But anyway, one of the angels, Metatron, ironically, yeah. that was supposed to be Metatron, scribe of God, he stated that all, you know, being able to write and create stories was an ability to, is our own ability to create our to, of creation ourselves where we are essentially yeah. gods it's a, a small fraction of it then you walk into scenarios where we have tulpas and thought forms with yes. authors who fully believe to this day one of the popular ones out there is uh, john constantine from dc comics that's right where <laughs> authors fully believe they've met or had very similar situations unfold from whatever projects they were working on come into their life, come into this reality as we know it. See, it's quite interesting you bring that up because I was watching somebody the other night, they were streaming, they were talking about a certain individual that visits people in the night. He wears a hat, right? Mm -hmm. They were talking about a certain individual that visits people in their dreams and he wears a hat. I'm not saying his name. Everybody can so I'm talking about. And I think, and I'm going to say this now, I do think that's some type of topic kind of thing. So I think that's been brought alive. I think that it's like, it's like if you believe in something that much, if everybody, there's a group of people, thousands of people believe in something, they can bring something like that into life. It's like Loch Ness, where everybody sees the monster or sees or goes to a location and sees like UFOs and weird shit like that and 
but it's but scientifically they've looked at it and they, they kind of figured out what's causing it. Maybe it's because everybody's believes in it that much. It's came to life. The dream world is it's weird. I've never had a recurring dream. You ever had a recurring dream, Dakota? Like, oh yeah. Right. I've never experienced a recurring dream. I, every dream I've had has maybe been similar, but it's been a wee bit different every time. So it's the only dreams that disturbed me is when I was a wee boy, I would say I was maybe six or seven. I don't think I've tell end of this. I this has got to sound stupid, right? I I used to have this fear I was in this big ball and I was rolling down a hill. And I would have that recurring dream. It was a recurring dream. I'll admit that. It was a recurring dream, and it's when I was and I was a wee boy about sex. And I was rolling down the cell, and I'd wake up, and I'd be sweating, and I would be like, oh, my God, what the hell is that? And that would happen and happen. Then it changed. Then it totally changed to cartoons. I dreamt, and it was a cartoon world after that. And it was constant cartoon worlds after that. Everything was cartoon. I would dream about my school. I would dream about my friends, right? But there were cartoons. Mm-hmm. Everybody was cartoons. And it was, I'm not talking like black and white cartoons. I'm talking colour cartoons. And everybody was cartoons. And it was so weird. And then it, I think when I go to it, was maybe 16 or 17. It stopped. It just stopped. It never happened again. The two dreams never happened again. And that used to, hey, I am fire horse. That used to happen all the time. And when I go to, let's say, adulthood, it just stopped. Which I find interesting. Odd. But interesting. You remember, this was a while ago. I may have to kick up the little archive series again just to revisit old interviews. But you remember when uh, we had, uh, let's see, what was his name? David Hoburn from uh, the Birmingham UFO group. I got some. Uh, and how he said that. that certain screen memories can actually present themselves like cartoons. Yeah. When it comes to dreams, regardless of whether it's a form of astral travel, dreams are perhaps one of the best best windows into someone's mind to how their brain functions. It 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 is, and and anytime you have a certain dream, and one thing I've noticed is that if there's a certain intensity behind the dream this is just my experience maybe others mm-hmm. have had it I'll go, if there's a certain intensity to the dream where all of a sudden that was just like wow it felt like you just watched a really well done film best yeah. way i know to describe it we have a couple people who were witness to <clears throat> one of my it incidents where and now, mind you, when I did that recent interview, I was uh, mostly sleep deprived because I was a hell of a lot more busier than I was expecting that day. Family drama, car getting course, serviced, all, all that. But uh, when my son came to visit me, it came through dream state. Then I, in this state, I remember seeing the front of the hotel, being able to zoom in on certain individuals. Basically, short version. The ladies that had a lot of the, the most glitter on because it was the disco night. That's who I kind of sp- tried to seek out first. I, I was trying to look at people I knew who would be there. The next morning, all of a sudden, people are posting about videos and pictures about UFOs in the exact position mm. I was. <clears throat> yeah. Now, why did that it did not include this? Yes, because let's face it. I'll just just give a little sneak preview about those of you who are been waiting for the book I was talking about that I'm writing. It's almost up to 400 pages, so there's a lot of detail, and I was trying to condense for time. <laughs> but nevertheless, dreams are important to know because, on one hand, they can be helpful psychological tools that's why a lot of therapists may even ask you you know what kind of dreams do you have depending on Mm -hmm. whatever the situation is you're going in for 
because say like you have you're so stressed out at work you're yeah. dreaming of uh basically blowing up and just attacking people at the, your workplace type of, just a just a random scenario nothing yeah. in particular but then there's also instances where say you're trying to do a memory recall either because you believe you have some sort of past life situation mm-hmm. or there's a certain memory that for some reason, you know, let's just say, you know, just because a lot of time has passed since you really thought about that time that kind of got suppressed in your mind. So you're trying to bring that back to the surface and you go to bed. Next thing you know, you have a dream that's exactly that memory. Yeah. It, dreams can be very helpful tools. And when you know how to properly work them, you can truly change your perspective on life itself. Oh, yeah. That's why several yeah. cultures all over the world had such an emphasis on dreams. They knew that okay, maybe in, on some level they over exaggerated the spiritual aspects of it. Oh, yeah. Who knows? I would love to have one on one conversations with these individuals. But nevertheless, they knew there was something there. Of course, I'm going to say this. When I was six, when I was in six, seven years old, and I had the cartoons, it was always in the same place, I remember. It was in the playground at my school. And it was, I don't know if, I don't know if that was somebody had put it there. See, this is, this is what got me interested, because I've heard people talking about this, how ETs can do that. They can, like, put false memories in here, like, false dreams to make you think that you were someone else. But it, it was always in the same place, but it was always with different people. People mm-hmm. that I didn't recognise. Didn't recognise them. And when you tried to look at them close, their faces were blank. Mm-hmm. Did you get me? And it was it was so vibrant. It was like, oh, how can I say this? Remember the old Spider-Man comics, the the, the colours in that, the yellows, the reds, the, mm-hmm. the right old... I'm talking about when, you know, when you, you had this paper that was like glossy paper. I'm talking about the kind of... The cheap paper. You're, you're, talking, talking, about. you're, I'm like, talking, you're talking about. You're talking quite old right. school, man. I'm talking old school colored paper. Um, yeah, all the stuff that would. It? Yes, would and I never read yellow if you didn't preserve it. I, I was dyslexic. I was dyslexic, and I never read a comic in my entire life. Never, ever. And that's what I can remember. And it was mm-hmm. always in the same place, but it was always different people. And when you get close to their faces, their faces were just blank. Which I find interesting. What's that? Dreams well, are very important. I am a study in... What's that? I am Fire Horses Go? It's... Hold on. Jungian... Like, like Carl Jung. I know it's yeah. a J, but that's how you pronounce it. Psychology and Analysis. And Carl Jung... He did actually have a lot of focus in almost psychic and supernatural phenomenon as well. So it a lot of hey Lewis, hey what's up Lewis? By the time you fucking show up, man, God, <laughs> he's coming on the show. The border night, where you go? I, I'm just anyway. Fuck, what was I going to say? Don't know. But no, gym, so, <laughs> but not. Actually, kind of going into the dream cartoony phase, comic book phase. When I was a kid, a lot of the dreams I had had very similar, had a very similar artistic style to the show, a show on Cartoon Network. It was Teen Titans. Whenever it would be like E.T., weird supernatural fight scenes, I don't know. Maybe on some level, E.T.'s have tried to put that there because it is something you would, you wouldn't necessarily freak out about. Mm-hmm. Because you would think, oh, I, I'm, because if you, go, if you go to tell you, say like you go to tell your parents you had a weird dream and it's in a story. That it will you would look like you were mm. in a cartoon. Your parents would 
chances are your parents are just gonna say, "Oh, you're watching that cartoon too much." Yeah, you know. Yeah, you it would easily be tossed aside under most circumstances, but at the same time, you never know because there's been instances, especially lately, where I've tried to practice dream recall and all this stuff where it's almost like I can start to visualize where things are superimposed and start to peel back the layers. Yeah. Sometimes again, kind of going into how trauma and certain situations like that also can play into this, whether it's alien abduction scenarios or you had Mm -hmm. an abusive situation, you need to be careful about wanting to rip off the mask because you may not like what you see behind it. That's something that you brought up there that I'm actually quite interested in. Obviously, the extraterrestrials that visit this world and the Galactic Federation know there are different alien life forms out there. They obviously dream to, let's face it, the dream. Because they're, oh, yeah. they're living organisms, they've got souls, right? The dream, right? I wonder if any of the races, I mean, the ones that are very sophisticated, have actually managed to like tap into that kind of dream realm. I, I know what like, came hey, with abductions and they replace your memories and stuff like that. But I would love to hear like for somebody that took again like Elena's kind of point of view on this, which she thinks hey, like what the extraterrestrials think about this subject. You see where I'm going with this? Because they're like there'll be alien life out there, there'll be alien life out there just like us. They might look totally absolutely different, right? But they'll have like weird dreams basically the same as yours. I say different, obviously, but different because it's a different world. But then there'll be like entities out there that are really, really old, right? And they've figured out ways like, like Dame of you, for instance, bringing you here. But Elena and all that, bringing her here, bringing, bringing everybody here, but bringing all the star seeds here. It, I would love to know the science in behind how they do that. I really would. How they do, how they, how they can manifest into the, the dream world to like change your brain waves and stuff like that. What's that? Yeah, like that. Like Daz was saying, if you believe you have had situations like this, might be a pretty good chance, especially after meeting me. I, but I had, I had weird dreams not... before I met you. I had like, weird yeah. dreams before. Yeah, I, I had weird dreams before I met you. But and Chris, you're far from the first person to ever say that. Yeah, they may have had a few experiences here and there, but after meeting me, things start going into hyperdrive. I'm going to say that right, I'm going to be totally honest here. When when I had daydreams before I met you, it all stopped when I was sixteen, run about then, and all the dreams after that was all really paranormal. It was all dead loved ones that came to me, and I've found out because I've been getting learned for people learning me my psychic abilities and stuff like that in the spiritual realm, and that I've been learning for that to control that with the spirits, right? Now, but when I met you, it was like it was like oh my fucking god, excuse my language, but it, oh my god, where the hell is this guy taking me now? I mean, I was in shops. I can remember those shops. I can still put these shops into my brain and what they look like inside. I can't have different shops because they were weird. They were weird looking. You don't have bloody triangular doorways and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, mm. like in buildings and black floors with black marble floors. Well, no marble. It was something else, but it was black anyway. And folk walking about with stupid looking heads and stuff like that. Sorry if I'm offending any aliens watching this, but... <laughs> you get what I mean? And then I started dreaming about your kids. And then in this place, this planet, whatever it was, and the purpleness and the the weird terrain and all that. And then after we while, it, it kind of stopped. It just stopped. It just completely stopped. And then I went back to my kind of spiritual stuff again. But lately I've been, I don't know, I've been kind of having weird things happen. Now and again, that's kind of, I think I'm mere set on the, the spiritual side of stuff, guys. I'm mere set on the spiritual side of stuff. I don't know why. But I, from time to time, there is like messages come to me, and I'm like, oh, and I'm kind of I hesitant to go in there. Maybe it frightens me slightly. Like maybe that's the truth. You see, 
I was to kind of go into what you were talking about earlier because I have gotten a look at some of this hell that actually comes together. These beings, they have such an understanding of several different, not, not just us, but several different species, anatomy, physiology, psychology, all that. Mm-hmm. Say how like soldiers with PTSD, just as an example. Yeah. There are trials, I, be- I believe they're still going on, where they're working on drugs that help sever the neurological connections associated with whatever trauma they went through. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is that when the test subjects who are on this drug after a few trials, they lost a lot of that emotional connection to where if say they got attacked by a significant other, they're able to actually, it was, it was like, they just came to an acceptance about that and accepted that as just another day. That's how much of an emotional connection they had. These ETs, they have that knowledge on being able to do that to where they can deal with your mind and reconnect things to make sure you are not screwed up too much in the head. If you saw something you may have not been ready for. And even if they don't necessarily have that knowledge on hand, ready to go, their technology has such an incredible memory space to where it can scan every bit of part of you and know what you need. Yeah. Like that's and that's why everybody's getting all excited about these med beds, right? I'm looking forward to it most. Now, mind you, the ones we're gonna be seeing, they're kind of to draw the similarities to say like internet connection, the ones we're gonna see up front first probably going to be like the dial up version. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we like were like cell phone to, of the eighties kind of thing, yeah. Yeah, they may not the big be thing with big on. Mm. as sophisticated. And, but in the same situation, though, there's been a few times where we get into similar subjects about this and say, oh, the med beds can do this, the med beds can do that, but med beds, med beds, med beds, blah, blah, blah. Yes, it is absolutely fascinating to see those things at work. But at the same time, you still got to get the person who's injured to the med bed. I, I mean... I've I've heard these stories right, and I could and I, I never really looked into this, but I, I'll maybe look into this after and I'll see if I can get the person to come on. But I've heard the people that have been really unwell with cancer and stuff like that, and they've went to their bed, right, and they've went to this weird place, right. You came where I'm going with this, didn't you? Mm-hmm. They've went to this weird place, and there's these weird looking creatures stalking about, looking at them. They don't really talk; they just use their mind to talk. And they'll say, right, I'm going to heal you. And they're like, all right, no bother. And then they wake up the next day and they feel totally different. And then they go to the doctor and the doctor's like, there's nothing wrong with you anymore. Can they think? And it's, as I, I find it fascinating how they can take you. It's not just how they can take you. And I, I don't think they're actually taking you for your bed. I think they're actually, I think that because they're so sophisticated, right? I think they can heal you in your bed if they do desire. If they do desire, they can heal you from where they are, some of them, depending on what it is, right? If you're missing limbs or something like that, I don't think that's ever happened, or you can't get another limb or whatever, but it makes you wonder, and it, it, it makes you wonder, too, a lot of people say, oh, they beam you up and all that kind of stuff. I don't think they beam you up. I don't think they, I think they take your soul from your body, transport that back to the wherever it is, the ship or whatever, and put you into something. So then you do stuff there, and then they bring you back and plop you back in your body again. But there is cases where people have been tamed and they've been cut open and things implanted in them. I get that. But I do think with some people, like you, Dakota, like you, Dakota, they maybe leave your body there, but take your essence away. Right, pop you into something else, you go and do your business or whatever, right? And then 
bring you back and pop you back in. It really depends on the circumstances because <laughs> I've been in those situations where I have taken people and basically performed surgeries on them because mm-hmm. they were affected by something pretty serious. And now I know, say, like Dots and a bunch of other people, they're going to say, oh, Dakota, maybe it was like a multi dimensional thing. And maybe it probably was, but a lot of the abnormalities in my story seem to be that I can, is from coming from the fact I can technically place them on a linear timeline. But anyway, that's beside the point. That's another discussion altogether. But going back to how it is, because there is several stories where individuals say they're in the hospital, they have some kind of organ failure, and mm-hmm. they remember this dream where all they see are these weird like beings. They don't really mm-hmm. they they look hu- human in shape, but you don't really see any faces, any yeah. skin. They just, they looked like those star beings from Men in Black International. Ah, right, that's it. Right. It, it, just, just to kind of use a pop culture reference. And it's like they could perform sort of a sur- surgery soul transplant, if you will. Where, and this is based on the eyewitness reports, where, say, they had issues with their liver. Yes. It was like they took out the bad livers. They managed to disconnect the bad liver, its essence, from the body and put Mm -hmm. something new there. But you also have reports, and there's actual video evidence of this, where there are Eastern hospitals that after getting into the patient into a certain diet, a certain exercise regime, Mm certain like meditations, yoga, with intent, focus, and some chanting, they have been able to completely erase stage four tumors. Yeah. And obviously anybody who's dealt with a family member or themselves, if you get the news that you're stage four, that's essentially... Oh yeah, you're screwed. You're that's essentially you're yeah, being told you're done for. Uh, yeah, you're done. You, when you get stage four, you're, you when you get stage four. I look, I can't folk that have died with stage four. Everybody's optimistic. They're like, "Oh, I'm not going to die." A year later, you're dead. Right? Look, it it doesn't take much for someone to change and then die. I seen that with my mother. She passed away really quick. She came home from the hospital and she was fine. She was walking about nothing, right? And then. A month later, she was going. Yeah. It doesn't take much, right? And look, it's strange how they date to some people, but they don't date to others, which I find interesting. Is there anything special about those people that's been healed with them? That's what I've always wondered. Yeah. It's they like, I'll, I'll just put myself on the stand right now where certain instances where I've been saved by circumstances to where even veterans within police and medical services who were trying to help me, they've been on the job over a decade at least. They -hmm. still wonder to this day how the hell I'm alive because of some of the situations I come out. And then I go to tell them that, oh, yeah, I just – talk to my dead grandfather or this happened or that happened there yeah. <laughs> i made them believers See, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to also say this i'm going to say this i don't think it's just extraterrestrials that can visit you in the dream world and heal you i think it's i think spirits can do it too because at the same time mm-hmm. <clears throat> the other side of this it's not necessarily that the dream world could be used as portals which you can oh, that's oh, why yeah, it's called can. dream walking Mm -hmm. but as a precautionary measure your body does still take sort of an inventory of your surroundings while you're asleep Mm -hmm. so in the event say you gotta you have a bad wire in your house and now there's a fire that starts yeah so 
hopefully you wake up. <laughs> mm. But never let be spirits, ETs, even negative, positive, all sides of the spectrum when it comes to whatever you believe in, whatever these beings actually are. And I'm the reason why I'm putting this is because let's face it, there's so much out there. Oh yeah. They mm-hmm. all know that they can manipulate the environment to mess with your head for whatever purpose they may have. Yeah. Yeah. And let's face it, some of them may just try to prank you just for the hell I've, of it. I, I've, <laughs> look, when I don't know if Pete's still in the room, but when his dad died, I was devastated. Like, because I was quite fond of Mike the Naked Bigfoot. And that dream I had of him, that was so vivid. I can remember that to this day. And what he did in it was just so funny. It was just so funny. And I've, it cheered me up. It did, it cheered me up. And then I knew I would see him again, you know? And it's the same thing with my mother. I've had visitations for that day, which I thought was quite strange because it's still quite early. Okay, I mean, people will ah, it's been about four months now, but to be honest with you, I didn't get like a visitation from my grandmother until it was like four years or two to four years after each one. Okay, I mean, it takes a while for them to learn how to do this kind of stuff. It really depends on the case because there's there's been instances where <clears throat> I've had spirits interact within 24 hours of something see, happening to them. See, my first grandmother, I had that dream the day after she died. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. And Lisa says to me, yeah, it's, it usually takes a wee bit longer than that. But then the one with my mother was, Jesus, that was that was on Tuesday night getting into Wednesday. That's who the dream was, guys, that I was talking about. And it was just too strange how it all came together. Because on the Friday, Alan told me about something that he had a dream about. And it's just weird how things all just come together. On that date, on that particular day, was the four months since my mother died. Which is quite interesting, how everything comes together. It also makes you wonder on the other side of the spectrum, meaning life, where you know you have individuals who believe they've seen, you know, they were ex- someone either they or someone or their family was ex- expecting a child, and they either had some sort of mm-hmm. visitation or dream about the child coming yep. on the way. It's happened to me. Yeah, I freaked out my sister, the one who had the baby back in December, no. because the day she found out it was a girl, two days before that, I had a dream where she visited me. She uh, she looked like she was in her teens, which is kind of the first clue that I'm. Once she gets to talking a little bit more, we may be dealing with some past life regression there. We'll see how that plays out, but. Yeah, with, I was able to tell you know the color of her eyes, what she, what she looked like. She, she looks exactly like her mother, which was the first mm. thing. <clears throat> Two days later, she has one of her prenatal appointments when she's supposed to find out the sex of the baby. She gets home after that. The first thing she does look at me and says, "Before I say anything, I need you to shut up right now." She was pissed that I got it right that it was a girl. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, like, but like I said, but it kind of going to the point I was trying to get to. If these are new souls, how the heck are the babies doing that? See, I think that is a good question, actually. How are the babies doing that? But I don't know what they're doing next door. I think he's noting something doing. But anyway, I was about to say, what's that <laughs> it's, knocking, it's, man? It's, 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 <laughs> he's building on his conservatory. I don't know what he's doing next door. But um, look, we don't know what the dream world. We'll never know until your time comes and we Chris, die and we go. Chris, okay. Do you know hear me? Look that. Next door. I just started. There's nobody next door to me. The guy was building the day. Who's just going to enter? It's the spirits. It's the spirits. 
But anyway, no, the guy's building on the conservatory. He's one of these folk that like to work at night. Look, I'm going to say this. I don't know how you managed to figure out she was a girl, right? Right? Yeah. But... <sighs> It's a, I suppose there could have been a chance to look at it. Could have been a wee bit of a chance to look well, at it. But you see that Terence Lawrence interview? It's kind of the one I'm talking about. With the Joe Rogan. Yeah. You, you yeah, came yeah, up, I'm Terrence, going to bring up for you, didn't you? Terrence Howard. Terrence Howard, yeah. Terrence Howard, Terrence Howard sorry. Did you, see what he, did you see what he talked about with his pregnant wife and their son? Mm-hmm. When he first became pregnant, he turned a torch and he shined, he shined the torch into the womb. And he did that every single day. Every single day, right? And then the baby was born, the baby got a wee bit older, and he turned a torch on one day, and the kid just went straight for it to try and grab it. As if, she, if, if the kid could remember that. Mm-hmm. Maybe your psychic abilities or something like that. Maybe you've, like, maybe, I don't know, maybe you've just picked up oh, that yeah. it was a girl. Well, here's the thing. I'm only bringing up my assistant. My my niece, because that was the most recent example. That was being able to predict the kids. That's been something I've been able to do literally since I was two. And like Iron Firehorse point, points out, technically, unless there is a weird genetic condition, let's just ignore the LGBT thing right now, just for simplicity's sake. Mm. Aye, right, aye. We you know, we try to be yeah, inclusive, yeah. but anyway. Who so you? What do you identify as a thumb up? Anyway, see, when I was about two years old, there was this one. My aunt was told me the story where there was this one day where I walked up to my stepmom and put my hand on her stomach and said, "My baby sister's in here." She had no clue she would talk what I was talking yeah. about. Everybody else was weirded out. Next day, she goes to the doctor's office because she's not feeling well. Gets tested. Voila, she's pregnant. So, yeah. being that I was the oldest sibling, that happened with damn near every single one of my siblings. Mind you, I have 11 sisters and six brothers. And you know, it sort of became a little bit of a game for me because I figured, you know, at least there's, as far as I know, there wasn't any weird genetic conditions that affected the sex of the child. It's a 50 50 shot. And if I get it wrong, oh well. Yeah, the, I suppose I only ever got one wrong. It's quite interesting. Let's say, I that. wish I had that that kind of luck when she, I was gambling. I, I was going to, going to say you could like, pick the right lottery numbers of the Mega Millions or something like that. You know, tried that didn't work in my favour. <laughs> uh, I try I try that every Friday night. It doesn't work in my favour either. I try different concoctions and numbers, and very rarely because that's a game of chance. That's what people don't realise. The lottery is a game of chance. It's mm-hmm. like you can't change things. It's like the, the time travel scenario where, okay, I mean, you go in the future, look at the numbers, come back again, go to play it. It's got to be, it's got to be different every time it comes out, right? It's mm-hmm. like it's, it's a it's a game of chance. But I don't know. It's it's been an interesting subject tonight. I'm going to say that the new it has been an interesting subject. There's my dog barking at a hedgehog outside. That's what she says. She says after the hedgehogs can hear. But look, there's some crazy stuff going on, and I think I think we should talk about this again. Actually, I think we should research some uh, clinical psychologists that explore this a little bit deeper. You know, someone yeah. who's a lot more experienced than a couple of bald knock. Not we should maybe try and get a guest on. We should try and get a guest on. Um, we should uh, try and get a guest on. What's that, Christopher, in the chat there? Don't let anyone steal your powers. Chance they will not want to let you go. Hmm? Hmm? Give me your power. The magic power. Not 100% <laughs> sure he was yeah, talking about that. Too. Know what he's talking about there, but tomorrow night, what's the show tomorrow night? We've got Lewis coming on in the oh, chat. The knowledge within sick. guys is coming on with us tomorrow night. Right. And you chat. definitely know Lewis has got some def- some interesting little theories on all the stuff that's going on. He does, and I might tomorrow night. I'll give you a. I was going to do it the night, but I've got a kind of sore head tonight, so I'll do it tomorrow night. I'll give a couple of star. Would you call it 
starts to oracle cards. Draw the masses in, give you a free reading. Tomorrow night on the show, a couple of cards, these all. You never know. You never know. We, we may have to start a little learning for you so that way. Yeah. Anyway. I'll be doing my card readings tomorrow, usual day anyway, during the day. Well, uh, oh, I was about to say, we, we don't want to be dragging on too long. i got to work tomorrow night. I'm back to work. I don't <laughs> worry. We're only at, don't have at 5 o'clock UK time in the morning. Oh, God. <sighs> no, oh, no, it's only for an hour and about tomorrow, guys. The same as what we've done tonight. But anyway, do you want to say anything about our bulb the uh, uh, lotion that you're bringing up? <laughs> it, yeah. Like I said, for those of you who missed the beginning of the show, we do have Bald and Monger's hair growth tonic. Unfortunately, due to some sort some sort of restrictions in shipping, we can only ship it to in the US. Because apparently some people thought that Bald and Bonkers was a hair restoration company. And before well, we close out, I don't. I, I I knew we saw this. Hold on, hold on. I knew I saw something. Well, anyway, Roshin, happy late birthday. That's right. <laughs> happy late birthday. Happy birthday. I know I saw. I know I saw that. I know the lot of laughing at me saying, "My God, what is that?" And see, that's a hundred percent plastic. May add, there was no. Um, Donald Trump wasn't uh, harmed in the process. More like Elton John. What candle in the wind? Pinball wizard. You know? Saturday night. You know? Anyway. All that kind of stuff. You know? They're not wrong about wearing a wee wig noon again. You know? Anyway. Listen, we probably should close this out before we go too off the rails. Yep. But Goodbye, if you haven't everyone. Seen, if you haven't seen it yet, check out the interview I did on uh, Grounded Starseed. Definitely turned out very well, considering I was half asleep throughout the entire thing. But you know, And we'll have all sorts of interesting little projects coming up very soon. You know, there we have the anthology. Just head on to baldenbarkers.net. The form's on there. I am going to be adjusting the form a little bit to help accommodate some some certain things, especially individuals who uh, may feel a little in- who want to participate, but may feel a little bit more intimidated by the idea of writing something because they have an issues with dyslexia. Let's no, there's a lot of people in this field that have some. There, mm-hmm. have dyslexia. Dyslexia, I, had no, yeah. I didn't realize so we started this show, man. There's Ros- there's Rosalind Dakota. Where can I find that? Oh, the uh, hair growth tonic. Here, let me just pull up the link real quick. We have a Printify merch store. You can get mm-hmm. t-shirts. You can get underwear. You can get little journals, mugs. Yes, you can get underwear with uh, his face on it. No! That's tempting. Can you know it? You can have me with a banana. Uh, you and your banana. Look, he's jealous because I, I look too handsome eating a banana. I'm the better looking one, motherfucker. <laughs> anyway, I'm the store. This is just what I've begged the fun that approach. <laughs> anyway. I'm like a fine wine, I'm mature. This is just one of our merch stores. We do have some very oh the stars. <laughs> No, the starseed thing you mentioned. I don't want your pants. Oh, God. Uh, that is on YouTube. Hold on. We'll try to uh, get the video pull. I don't know. Uh, I, can, I think we, we, we need to do like a, a gift giveaway one night, like underwear or something like that, you know, for our lucky subscribers. No. It only goes up to a certain size, Chris. So let's just put it that way. Mm-hmm. There you go, Gettles. God. <laughs> just you're, ignore you're me. Get... Have <sighs> How's... How we haven't gotten canceled for some of the things we said yet, I will never We're know. We're fine. What's the worst that could possibly happen? It's like robot chicken. I know. Emperor, you know, you we... chuck that off the... <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Wolf Culture, cancel us. We can use the free publicity. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, well, look, I identify as a turnip, so I've decided when I die and if I get buried, the turnip lies here in the day, you know. <gasps> oh my god! The aliens have took him, guys. So anyway, guys, is he coming back? <sighs> you know you're not getting Pressing rid of me. Button again. Pressing that wrong button again. Of course. Anyway. Here's the link. It's on YouTube. Just look up the grounded star seed. Although I think she changed it to the grounded star seeds. One of the most recent videos she put up. It goes a little bit more into the ET side of the story. But if you really want in-depth information about that type of stuff, you might want to wait to get that book out because there's a lot. <laughs> Yes, please yeah, check it out. I've watched the first half hour yet, and he watched the rest tonight when I'm lying in my bed and looking at hair lotion that I can't have. It's not a. It's not my fault that restriction came up. It's just. Nay, I was thinking of the the guys in the chat there that's wanting that hair lotion ointment. Dots went to rub it over. It's selling all that. You know, but the next big foot in Ireland. Anyway. <laughs> Anyway, well, anyway, we should probably jump off before we go too off the rails, like I said. Bye, bye. Much love. Take care. See you tomorrow. Lewis, don't you be late. Bye. Don't you be late, Lewis. Don't you be late. He's owned the Walden Bong Crusade. I see him. He's clicked on the link. He's clicked on the link. He's probably he's having computer problems. I think he's always having computer problems. It's Lewis we're talking about here. Come on. Uh, very true. Very true. Why is that no? Why is that no? Let me click on that. That's weird. That. What's going through that? There you go. Uh, I was just about to say, Christopher, in the chat, man, relax. We have a guest who's very notorious about being laid on us. Oh, I. He's, he's, That's he's, why we were making fun of him problem. last night. Yeah, he's he'll be on. He's just as uh, they said. That's why the people that's obviously subscribed to the Bold and Bonkers Network because I gave them a free card. That's what that is. Okay, that's what he came because I recognize the name. So, There's okay. no many okay. customers, obviously. I'm just a fan of I see you know, he was asking that there's still a lot of feed, and it was like sometimes we run a few minutes late because our guest start stands us up like a cousin at prom night. I know, Lewis. Come on, man. But we're waiting on well, you. I know we did that pretty, but come on, man. The aliens, we're waiting to bring you back. We've got to be talking about the Hopi people and all that kind of stuff and mad, crazy creatures from beyond the veil that visit uh... you in the night with flashy things. Oh, uh, yeah, they probably would be visiting him as much if he stopped just stalking them with his telescope. I see, that's what it is. They're probably like, look, there's that nosy bugger again in Spain there pointing his bloody telescope at me in my moon base. That's terrible. 
That's that. Every time I'm done here, I'm in my barbie. But that's an interesting thing. I've always wondered that. I mean, you must think that the aliens. Want... I wonder what they think here as humans. They probably think Jesus Christ, they're all fucking mad. Why? Why was I sent here? Yeah, really depends on their own mentality. Oh, what's up, God, man? I'm too tired for this shit to get stood up. Well, it's, it's only a newer. It's only a newer one. If he doesn't come on, that'll be him. He'll be in the bad books. From the back, I, I can't f- go to the airport, go into the airplane, fly over there, bang his door, drag him back out the house, put him in an airplane, flee him back, and put him in front of the computer. Can I? Well, oh, you could have just stayed in Spain and put him in front of a computer. But... I could, that's a very true. I could have done that day. But I, I could, I could give a, <laughs> I could, I, I could do a free card reading while everybody's well, well, still let's waiting. Do it. Up. Well, we're, we're still waiting. Does MD want? And I bet you Christopher's the first worst that goes. Oh, what a kill! Um, does MD want a starseed card? Chris, I, I just had an idea. I just had an idea. What? Use what? that bright ass motherfucking neon light you got. It, what would we'll send Lewis a message in Morse code using it? Um. Really, the only thing is, I'm going to complain a wee bit about YouTube here. They sent me that light, right? Brilliant light, but the cable's only like maybe that length. I had to buy an adapter for that. Figures. I mean, you, you could have made you could you could have gave me the, you could have gave me like a longer cable. Yeah, I mean, cause then I could have put it the other side of me. I could put it higher up. I could have maneuvered it run about, but no. No, you've got to give me like a stupid V cable where I've got to buy an adapter. You know? Yeah, it's usually how it goes. So guys, these are Spirit Oracle cards. These are uh, these are what are they? What are they these are Starseed Oracle cards. Right? I'll give you one of these to know, right? Well Dakota there is waking up. Uh the Starseed Oracle, a a fifty three card deck, and there's a guidebook. So it basically tells you if you're a star seed or if you're an alien for a different dimension. Right. Like Dakota, he, he, he's just back here as old, isn't he, Dakota? Mm, pretty much, man. Give me a break. I work nights, man. Come on. Tell you what. Oh, fuck. Oh, my care, man. I'm my care. No, I can't. I still see getting old, by the way. It's shit. Honestly, it's getting old. Right. The first card for you then, Dakota, right? Ooh. Or or do you want to or do you want to pick somebody in the chat? Uh, I'll do one card in the room until His Royal Highness arrives. Do you want to pick somebody? Uh, I, I don't care. Look, well, it's between me, Dots, and other Christopher there. So who, would, who wants the card reading? You've got twenty where, seconds. Where the heck is everybody? I know it's weird. Maybe something's happened and we don't know. Maybe us two and the, the rest of the people in the chat just don't realise there's something biblical happening at this moment in time. McDonald's is giving away free Big Mac. McRub. You never know. The McRub. When's yeah, the last? No. People get themselves in a car accident over a free McRib. Kenny, something I've never had. I've, 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 last, I've not been in a McDonald's for about six years. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I just, I just don't like. I don't know. There's just something about it. I, I watched a program once about how they make the fries and stuff. Like, you you should see how they make the McRib. No, nah, no, I've seen that. Day. No, the beasties. Gym mats. Them. Gym mats. What do you mean? The chemical that helps make gym mats firm, but, you know, kind of soft, is in McRibs. Right. Here we go. So, the card tonight, and ladies and gentlemen, the first card tonight is going to be Dakota. Let's see where he's from, from the star system. What star system are you for, anyway? That's, I never think I've ever asked you that. I'll see you on. Hmm. Rotten Reynolds? Oh, Rotten Reynolds. Oh, wow. I need to wake up. I know. You, you get it like Mountain Dew, then you can have. No, I don't have anything like that in the house. What about, oh, you've got Iron Brew. I've got to say Iron Brew. It's, it's available everywhere in Scotland as Iron Brew. Oh, uh, yeah. I would have to wait for an Amazon order in order to get that here. 
Somebody send them a case of iron brew or donate to the channel so that Dakota can buy you know, a case you know, of iron brew. You know, can't exactly. You know, and you know, we'll, we'll say, you know, today is Father's Day, so have a yeah, happy sure. Father's Day. Good, no, go mm-hmm. ahead. I, there's a little Father's Day thing I noticed that we'll talk about later, but go ahead. With Mark. Go ahead. Right, Dakota, you got water your garden, nourishment, body care, and tenderness, rest. No, I've heard that one before. Is that so? I've never heard this one before. I've had quite a few of them. I need, I need to find it first. Give me a second. There's a big book here with the names in it. Because I've never, uh, let's see, what's Starseed? Is this a Starseed one? There's a page. Um, where is water? Your garden. Like here, your garden has 120. These are good kids. I'm still learning them. Um, but you need rest, man. I think you need some. I need, you need a holiday somewhere. You need a, a waxing holiday. Now here we go. The old eyes here. Just give me one moment to kind of zoom into the procession here. Earth is a seasonal planet, and as such, you're a seasonal being. You're quite a seasonal person. Cycle. You can't be on and full bloom morning after month, day after day. You're strongly being called to put your brakes, rest, refuse to take a moment to restock. Replenish. This is turning into like a kind of boy on this one. I've never heard this one before. Replenish. Slow right down. Your body is the only body you're got given, and it needs respected as such. You're being called to take responsibility for your well-being, to put your health and body first. That's quite interesting because you have, you you work quite a lot. First, I know it can feel like time is running out. You're quite young. You're only in your what eighties. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> and if there's urgent things that simply can't wait, however, you keep pushing on. Soon, fatigue will set. And do you feel so t- cross it? Do you feel tired right now? See, that's interesting. That I drew this. Isn't it? The way of living is sustainable. If anyone continues to race through life, eventually they will reach exhaustion and it will take longer to recover than it would have done to rest. Immune system disorders, mystery illnesses are becoming more common because we are putting too much pressure on our bodies to keep up with the intentions piece of modern life. You are a hard worker, but I don't know if you want this. He does work a little long hours. How are you being called to put the brakes to rest? Restore when was the last time you took a holiday? Come on, when was the last time you took a holiday to go up before going? Last time I took a proper holiday? Mm-hmm. A couple of years ago. See, that's... Or had a full weekend day, afternoon, off. Look after your precious body and mind. Give yourself enough time to recover. When you find yourself running on your reverse, there is enough time. Life will bend towards you. You do. Star seed soul inquiries. What is your body yearning for? There you go. It's the first time I've heard that kid before. And it feels kind of funny that it's picking on me like that considering I woke up like two minutes before the show started. <laughs> Look, have you seen me sit and shuffle them for ages? <laughs> You see, my uh, main issue uh, the main issue is just that I work <sighs> nights, man, at the paycheck job, as I call it. Well, it's look, it's um, just checking Lewis. He's online. He keeps clicking on that link. I notice he keeps clicking on it. So I think he's having technical problems. Well, he, he could at least it. say something. I know, I know. Lewis, say it. You coming on? Lewis, if you have an issues, man, speak. To, we can help you out, man. Um, you want me to do one more? Yeah, sure. Just fill it time, and don't worry, you, don't worry, y'all. We're uh, working on maybe doing a little runway to the mountains because of the heat. See, you're you're needing rest. Who in the chat would like a card, a Star Seed Oracle card? They only this for special people now and again. So this is we're usually on a Sunday. So if anybody in the chat's wanting one, you better say no. First one to say. Yeah. Right, dots it is. 
I think Dots had been waiting. Dots just was waiting for that, wouldn't you, Dots? Wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, Dots was waiting for that. There we go. And then we'll talk about some ancient alien stuff and the Hopis and some strange shit and stuff that's been happening in the world. And we're sat in the chat there. Good idea, going camping north tomorrow, escaping the 33 states. Why are you Damn. having a heat wave and it's bloody cold here? Because it was snowing in, the, the, in bloody wheels last week or something like that. That's just fucking weird, man. I can't, I think this, this winter's going to be horrific. I think we're going to get blizzards and blizzards and blizzards. So this is for dots. Your volume and your mic's turned right down, you can. Hmm. <laughs> Here we go, Dots. Let's see what interstellar travels Dots has got to be doing. Lifting the veil. That's actually really interesting. You go there, because that's another one I've never got before. Let's see, Dots, my good man that you are. Lifting the veil, questioning everything, anything. Unaligned must go. So basically you have to get rid of stuff in your life. But let's see what it says in the book of despair. Did you say something there, Dakota? Dakota. What's up? Did you say something there? No. Uh, did anybody else hear that? What'd you hear? I heard this, and then it went seven. That lifting the veil. Did you need to see that? Eighty six. I'm telling you, I heard some. I'm telling you, I heard somebody say something there. Do you know hear it though? Did them in the chat hear that? I don't hear anything. No, I, I heard that. I heard it through the microphone. I heard it through them. I've got them on. I didn't hear anything. There's again. It was like I static. Didn't... Right, dots. You get left in the veil, my friend. Question everything, anything unaligned must go. So basically, you have to get rid of stuff in your life. Things aren't always as they seem. This era is one of uncovering stuff right in your life right so we can remember ancient truth everything in the state of recall and re realignment anything that is in harmony with the planet will not survive this goes for society and the world at large as in our lives if you pull this card you're being called energetically scan your life for things that may no longer be vibrational match for you I wonder what's going on in your life now, because it's quite interesting, because I gave him a tarot card reading about a week ago, and it came out with quite an interesting thing. But here's the next page. Art and how you've grown to dismantle the systems and the ways of being served. You and others, but no longer do. Some starseeds are here to lift the veil between the seen and the unseen worlds, to shine the light on things that are enthusiastic, underlining with the survival and well-being of Earth. To stand for the pr protect those who don't have a voice, to look deeper, question everything that prove previous generations did not. Some starseeds cannot tolerate things that aren't congenital. It's a big word there for me, that one. But they're here to bring society and humanity back into harmony. That is what Dots does and what you do too. Eh? With the planet, the creator large, if we tolerate things in our life that aren't aligned, that's really interesting this. And I'll tell you why after I've done this. The conjurement with it will add the mis misalignment of the planet. You're being called to trust yourself. Notice what's out of alignment and take the, the baby steps required to bring back harmony. This is no easy feat, but is somewhat both individually and the planet. Starseed Soul Inquiries. What isn't conjurement in your life? How are you being called to bring back 
into harmony. That's quite interesting because I gave Dots a reading about maybe a week ago with the tarot cards, and I felt that it was like there was something running about him that wasn't mm. serving him. That just wasn't the service. And I'm going to have a rest for a wee while, guys, and we're going to talk about some stuff because I'll have a wee rest for them now. But did you know, hear that? That was weird, that. I don't know what you're talking it about, was, man. It was, like, it, was, it was like a snake hissing. Did you hear that? Yeah. I keep getting it. Look, I'm, I'm more wireless and stuff like that, except for this. <laughs> That's weird. Does MD no hear that? Very strange. Very, and very strange. From Dots. Thank you very much, Dots. Thank you very much. I'll do some more after, but first we're going to start talking about some things. So, Dakota, what have you got to tell us about Father's Day? Did you ever notice how... Different countries have different dates for Mother's Day, but for Father's Day, it's all the same. Actually, it's weird you say that because I got my dad a, a pen today and I was sitting thinking about folk that have lost their fathers and stuff that I know and asked when's Father's Day in the United States and it went today and I was like, oh, I didn't get that. Yeah. I didn't realize that until this year, man. That's interesting, script I've been trying to research just out of curiosity why that is, but no. Just a random observation. U.S., it's one day. Mexico, it's another. U.K., it's another. Russia, it's a different one. Strange that, isn't it? It makes you wonder. Ooh, it's a conspiracy. It's a conspiracy. The sound must be on your end, because it's weird. It was only through my headphones, because obviously I can't hear it through the laptop. I've got my headphones back on because I'm medication takes away the pain now. But it was weird. It was like somebody was trying to talk to me. Hmm. Interesting, that is. So what else is happening? The, get a question. What's happening in the UFO world this way? I've not watched anything today with the UFO world for about a month and a half. Well, you know, as the weather's getting warmer, it's usually when uh, sightings start kicking up. Mm -hmm. More people being out and about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just reading the chat. Mar marketing. Mar 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 marketing. Marketing. But it's that radio show that we were on the other night was quite good. I've, I'm nearly I've an hour in now, so. It's not got long ago. I don't yeah. think it's. No, I, I keep falling uh, asleep. Uh, mm -hmm. I know there's a couple of people that are saying that they were getting a little confused about it. It's like, trust me, I know. I try living this story. <laughs> yeah. Imagine think that must have been quite a shock for you, by the way, finding that out first time that your children, and wife, and all that kind of shit. You know? Well, yeah, especially under the circumstances. See, it's interesting but then, that. But then again, when you really think about it, quite a few of us out there, that is how we found out. Is that we got to a, a very low point, then all of a sudden, something that technically shouldn't exist saved us. I mean, hell, it happened to Dr. Greer. and Look where he's taking it. It's quite interesting because... When you talk about what's in your book and that, and about how Ken the hanging self and stuff like that, right? And mm -hmm. the voice came to you and quite a don't do it and stuff like that. Remember what Mike the Naked Bigfoot mentioned when he went to. Shelter? Yeah, that, if only he was. If only we were fucking live when he did that shit, man. Virginia, thanks for coming in, but still. Thank you, Virginia. Yeah, no, remember how uh, one of the trailers I kind of referenced that? Mm -hmm. I did where he was basically saying the whole reason why you know my life was filled with all sorts of weird chaos was because I wasn't supposed to be here that somehow me cheating death created an imbalance the pale horseman yeah. was standing over my grave that shit was fucking creepy man 
And you tried to say it was all about you. I actually honestly, I honestly thought it was the Bale was because I was going through a lot of health problems and because the health problems then were nothing compared to the ones that I've got now. But but you had to I, say he was dead eye and on right on me the entire time. And you saw it yourself. For some reason, the things that were tied to Mike and the things tied to me did not like each other very much. Oh no, Mike was an interesting character. The things that fully. Foley- it was like Pete was saying that when Mike died, that the girl went on. But I obviously, I don't think it was a guy. It was a girl. I think it was something older, something ancient that was hanging about him. That maybe just liked him. Yeah. You know. But it, it it was it was interesting because I've I've heard that a lot of folk that have tried to commit suicide and stuff like that. And if you're ever thinking of that, guys, please don't do it. Phone a number help someday do something like that but there's been a lot of like there's been a lot of like interventions click on that link there guys it's popping on the screen now if you're feeling depressed or lonely or anything like that um i've heard a lot of people saying that there's been interventions Mm -hmm. there's been interventions in life and I've I, I've seen all these famous people in that where it's happened to them too, and they've changed, they've totally changed their life. They've totally changed their life around, mm-hmm. and they do the opposite to what they do. Can what I've noticed, and I don't know what this is lately, but see a lot of celebrities they know. They're all turning into Christianity. Have you noticed? Mm-hmm. It's as if they can something that we don't know. There's a lot of them out there that's turning to Christianity, which I, I I I don't really get. There's people out there that never believed in that stuff, and they're turning to Christianity. Well, it's a lot like when I first started talking about my story way in the beginning, before I started looking at the potential extraterrestrial side of things. Immediately. People are, were saying, oh, you got saved by an angel, saved by an angel, yada, 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 saved by an angel. That was the first thing you jumped to. I consulted fucking Vatican priests, and they're like, yeah, you may have seen something. I just muted my mic there because I was sorting my turtle, beach, the turtle beaches out, but... It's something I heard about the other night, and I've not had a chance to look back into it. Well, look around. You hear about angels saving people, right? I, mm-hmm. I don't think they're really angels. I, I think they're just spirit guides, to be honest with you, right? I, 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 do, I do believe the same as Mike used to say that angels and demons and all that, they're just what people call them. That's what people call them, right? They've got a different name, Lois, and whatever, right? I do believe, and I've heard this. Have you ever heard about demons saving someone? Yes. I have, actually. And the person that they save is a really nice person. They never did anything bad. Well, because that's the thing. When these labels, I mean, you even see it happen in extraterrestrial circles where Mm -hmm. they say Pleiadians. You know, that's a like a term we're all familiar with. Mm-hmm. They think because they're tall, blonde, and good looking, they're gonna be nice. When in reality that there's does. one particular group in there's one particular group from that area that's just now starting to flip to the good side. Yeah. They're the they were also the ones heavily believed to be associated with the Nazis. I, I do a lot of thinking you now that I'm, I do the spiritual stuff and all that. I, I, I had this idea. And I just want to tell you, tell me what you think, right? Everybody's like, "Oh, the demons are bad. The demons are bad, right?" I know the demons are bad, right? Mm-hmm. And then the angels are good. The angels are good, right? But what happens if the demons are only bad in this plane because they're here to teach humanity a lesson? What happens if they work with the demons? What happens if they work with the angels? Sorry. Right? Do you get where I'm going with this? The, the angels are here to teach good, right? The demons are here to basically teach you things about evil and 
things that bad things and all that kind of stuff. But what happens if when they go back to where they came from? What happens if they're all pals? Do you get where I'm going with this? Or work colleagues? Well, how do I put this? You yeah. have to take into consideration when you actually look at the legitimate lore behind mm-hmm. certain angels, demons. The story it becomes very different. You can t- easily tell there's certain angels that don't give a fuck about humans. See that century? Did, I... did you know there's actually an angel that you're supposed to be able to pray to in order to cure stupidity? I'm pray dead pray serious. We need to pray to that one. I probably need to pray to that one. <laughs> yeah, just for random. Fun little, fun little tidbit, but no, I get what you're saying. But and let's face it, let's say you have people who were heavy drug users, and mm-hmm. the one thing that got them to wake up was they were seeing demons, and it was getting to the point where mm-hmm. you snap a general photo. Say, like, there's this one example from years and years ago. Uh, it wasn't a case I handled personally, but it was something I saw on television where a gentleman he had issues with drugs mm-hmm. and while he was at his daughter's wedding there was what he thought was hellhounds standing behind him in the photo. Mm-hmm. And if you actually look at the photo and you're not thinking hellhounds and you're thinking that's a pretty messed up looking dog. Yeah. Once he saw that, that was his, like, oh, shit, if I don't get my ass in gear, stop using this stuff, I'm screwed. Hey, what I'm basically trying to say is this, right? Demons are here to the ruiny man, right? Or women, or whatever you want to call it now, turnips or whatever you identify as now, right? Can you imagine reading the Bible then, then, no? But never mind that. But anyway... Oh, dude, there is a Gen Z Bible. As a, as a, I don't even tell me. I don't even want to even... uses all um, the little terms. Right. But anyway. Right. I don't want to do that road, right? But what I'm saying is, what happens if... What happens if, right, God told the demons and the devil and the such and that to come to Earth for one purpose, and that was to teach man or woman or whatever you identify as evil. So that's all they'll experience for that, right? And then it takes the angels, and the angels are meant to bring love, right? What happens if that is just their job? What happens if, right, when you die, for instance, right, and you go, like, say you go to hell, say you're a Nazi or something like that, you go, to, you go to hell, right? But if you say, would you call it, oh, Jesus, help me, Jesus always comes to help me, well, that's what, what folks say, right? See, I believe that, I don't think hell actually exists. I think it's just a myth. It's a myth that, that the Bible tried. Now, this, 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 listen to me. I feel that, that as bad places, the darkness where bad people go, right, for like serial killers, murderers, and all this kind of stuff, they, they go to these places, right, and they have to live out what they've done, right? But I do feel that they can break away from that and come into the light again because they will have the option. Think about it. It's like, let's take the Catholic Church, for instance. If you got all the mafia and stuff like that, the murder folk and all that, they whack them, right? But if they go to a priest and say, oh, hail Mary, full of grace, or whatever it is they say, right? That's them. They're basically, they can go to heaven. How's that? How does that work? Here's another angle for you. What about those individuals who are so mentally disturbed that they see murder as nothing. They feel no regret about it. Mm-hmm. Hell exists, but it's not exactly what people think it is. You create your own hell. Yeah. Hell, things have gotten so twisted over time and people just absolutely sucking when it comes to doing the research for themselves 
yeah. on what's actually out there. The Angels, the, the, they're, they're, they were never really supposed to be these loving beings. Yeah, there's certain ones who had that kind of personality, but at the same time, you actually see what these angels actually look like, you ain't going to be welcoming them with open arms. They're scary as fuck, man. I have. That, that's what I, <laughs> look, I can there's demons, right? And I can they exist and I can they're bad, right? But I don't think the right name for them is demons. I, I think the right name for them is they've got, so, so, look, everybody, when did the first name demon come into existence? What, a thousand years ago? Five thousand years ago, around about then? What? Quite a few of them been around longer than that. I would know, but I'm I'm saying portrayed with the Christian Bible. Everybody will think I'm a Satan worshiper or something. I'm no a Satan worshiper. I'm no in any way. I can't always say this, and they're actually fine. But all right, never mind that. If you want to go in the literal sense, some of the first quote unquote demons, as we mm-hmm. understand, as the common understanding nowadays, trace back to the Garden of Eden. Yes. Right. What I'm trying to say is this, right? I believe that if you live a good life and you do good things, like I try and do, I try and live a good life and I try and do good things, right? Goodness will always come back to you, right? Like karma and when you go to your next life, they might say, right, you're going to get a great life this time. You'll have money and your wealth and all that kind of stuff, right? Because of what you did. But what I'm also trying to say is that what happens if, right, we'll just take devil, right? We'll take the devil and we'll take God, right? Two of them together. The devil and God, right? The devil's there to punish everybody, right? God's there to basically create everything and bring you to heaven and stuff like that, right? But let's face it. Where would the devil be if humans didn't have... What's that thing? Is it free will? Mm. Would there would there be such a thing as demons if there was, if there was no free will? Think about it. You also have to take into consideration the concept of the afterlife. It's not to the other world. There's demons that oh, yeah. are never from evil. Earth. They're, no, no, yeah. not, not just not just good you. There's some of these beings who have never been to Earth before. Yeah, and, and you know because they tend to have sort of greenish skin. It's sort of the first indicator. I there's going to be, I'm going to say this now the alien spaceship landed in the White House lawn now and two purple aliens come out, two red aliens come out and a, a multicolored one come out. They'd probably be like, Oh my god, everybody would go racist towards them, right? And they would oh they're demons are coming against oh. you got all the mad people, right? That's why I think it's a bit early for the UFO disclosure and stuff like that, because I do think the humanity a lot of humanity can understand it, like you and Dots and some people in the chat and stuff like that. But when it comes to the, the, the kind of brainwashed people in this world, and let's face it, there is a lot of brainwashed people in this world, who are they going to stop picking on? They're going to stop picking on the coloured people of this world and start picking on them. Think about it. Mm-hmm. Which is horrendous. You shouldn't be picking MD colours. You know what I mean? You shouldn't be picking MD. It's, it's, a, it's a joke. It's disgusting. I believe that you should do good for everybody. You should try your best to help everyone. Imagine if everybody tried to help every single person, how better this world would be. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. And it's something I've said before. If you actually look at the stories behind certain demons, take out... Like... You come into the core. Can you hear, guys? Can you hear Dakota? I think he's the Earth to Christopher. No, it should talk it's like to me. Are you there? No, you. I can hardly see you. You're all pixelated. Mm. But nevertheless, like I said, certain demons. You get rid of the supernatural context. They're very, they're very human. They they read like individuals. 
with post traumatic stress, just as an example. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you know, there's quite a few of them that want to help, but it's just that they get told to step back because of the stigma. The term you actually go back far enough. The term demon once originally meant all spirits. Yeah. It wasn't just one side of it. It was the term demon applied to any sort of spirit. Yeah. Good I, evil. I, well, yeah. I mean, you think about it. I do the tarot card readings and stuff like that. Can you imagine that was 600 years ago I did that? Huh. What would have happened to me? I would have been burnt at the stake. And I see what Dot says when he said, look, I've, I've, had, I've had visitations for them, for the ETs and stuff like that. And I if they'd land in my garden and look at me, I'd be like, all right, you want to come in for a cup of tea kind of thing? I, I, I wouldn't mind what colour they were and what they looked like. But you do get the people of this world that are so racist to the core that they believe that they're the only ones that should inhabit this world. But what they do not realise is a different, the human race could die out and a different species come along. Their soul will just get transferred over to a different body eventually. How do they not know that thousands of years ago there have not been thousands of different souls in different worlds? Exactly. You just get people that are... So much. But you get so narrow-minded people. You get uh, the KKK, for instance, right? They are one of the biggest bunch of Egypts that's ever existed in the century, right? Everything. They've... The the white power and all that's going to shut, right? This is why the world's in such a mess. Because they're racist people. Doing racist things. It's a little bit more complicated than that. There is a part of the human brain that associates tribalism. And it's something we've had since we were monkeys. Mm-hmm. Where we basically realize, hey, this person is not from our group. They may not be safe. That's where it comes from. Having to overcome that sensation is what is going to require the first place. That's why they say when disclosure happens, we're not going to necessarily be seeing a lot of the reptiles, the greys, Mm -hmm. because there's still quite a few of them that are on the good side, but we're going to see the ones who, had you not truly been paying attention to what they look like, you wouldn't think of them as, you, you would think they were just as regular people. Maybe kind of tall in a lot of cases. Because there's some of these races where the average height is six and a half feet tall. <laughs> More tall people! <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I, I, this, this is what I would love to say. is I've, I've met, met racist assholes in my life, right? But I would love to say, go to one of the most racist persons and say, if, if I could, and say, listen, he says, See your previous life, you were an African American slave. Well, well and they'd be like, have... "Fuck!" It, it, it would totally change their outlook and things. But see, this this is what people don't realize. I, I've been watching a series on uh, Netflix. I don't know if you heard about it. It's called Sweet Tooth. It's a bit wee boy, and they're all hybrids and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it was based off a comic book by right. written by Neil Gaiman. I, I, all the humans started giving birth to like animal hybrids, right? And all the humans died out. And everybody thought it was the end of the world because all the humans were dying out and all these hybrids were being born. But it wasn't. It was just a jump in evolution. You die as a human. You can come back as a hybrid. You're still a life form. You're still you're still on that planet. It's still your planet. It doesn't matter. You're just a wee bit different. That's what I'm trying to say. And that's what's wrong with this world today. Everybody thinks that they're, they're better than everybody just because they're white or they're some other weird way about them. What's that in the t- okay. tribal war? And I was then just reading that really quickly. See, that actually makes a very good point. I mean, it, you don't even have to go into the past life sort of scenarios. Look at those instances where, you know, these individuals who have had certain ideals that say, oh, just because they're German, they, they, uh, we're one of the best countries out there, yada, yada, yada. All the countries, you know, kind of lack, and the French kind of suck. Uh, it's just one of the examples. Not picking on Germany, because, well, 
just look at German history. That's why they're always portrayed as villains in movies. But but they actually go to take a DNA test, yet the part, the country, the ethnic group, or whatever the situation may be, that they picked up on most, mm-hmm. that happened to actually be a good portion of their DNA. Yeah. Like a racist woman goes to the hospital, but she makes all of these derogatory remarks about gays, about blacks. Then all of a sudden, the doctors go to test her to try to figure out what's going on. They realize she has a particular illness only African American tend to get. Then they ran. So, in order to fully understand it, it's from a TV show. They run her DNA. They they get like a geological profile of her DNA, and they find out she's part black. Yeah. She practically had a stroke right then and there. Yeah. Yeah. One thing before I say anything about the other stuff is 42 minutes into the show, a white orb came out your wall and then went back out the door again. Sounds about right. Mm. But anyway, it's, I just thought I'd tell you in case MDL's else seen it. I mean, look, I don't know how people are going to relax when they, when they eventually show themselves. I mean, you think about the ancient civil. Let's talk about Peru, for instance, the the the, the ancient civilizations in the jungle. Does it never really get to see humans that much? And they're all over the tappy when they see you with a smartphone, right? And when somebody shows them a picture, uh, like an extraterrestrial, like, oh, they're the ant people. They live under the ground. Mm-hmm. They know them. They're the saviors. They saved us a long thousands of years ago for a great cataclysm and stuff. See, that's amazing, that though. How the, there's these natives, there'll be natives, there'll be natives in the world right now that have never seen technology, right? Mm-hmm. But they've probably met these aliens, and these aliens are probably talk to them all the time because they know that they'll mm-hmm. never really interact with like people like us. So they know that their secret's safe. Well, that's why, and here in the States, you have certain indigenous tribes, when you hear some of their stories, you realize they're talking about Sasquatch. Mm-hmm. Interacting with the Sasquatch as common as just running into your neighbor Joe while you're out and about on yeah. your daily routine. It, yeah. it, that mentality has always been there. Oh, it's like, oh, they're just another type of person. But the thing yeah. is, Going back to this sensation of tribalism, there is a physical part of the brain where it flares up. Yeah. And it's the fact that humans, regardless of how you believe our origins took place, there is a common thread. Is that we heavily rely on our ability to group together in times of yeah. need. And there's mm-hmm. individuals who saw that, took advantage of it, for their own ideals to put themselves in positions of power. Yeah. It's happened throughout history and we yeah. just let it happen because either we didn't want to take the role ourselves or that was just part of who we were. We were followers rather than leaders. And unfortunately yeah. it's, that's why they say corporate CEOs have very similar psychological profiles serial killers Mm -hmm. it's just that they handle their urges in a different way yeah how many white serial killers in the United States has there been that's been captured would you say how many what white serial killers has there been in the United States would you say that's been captured Several. several how many colored Allegedly more, but uh, cities like Chicago are. I but that's 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 not, the, that, that's drunk drug, drug and crime and stuff, is it? No, there, no, 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 no. In s- certain cities like Chicago, I know is a big one right now, where there's entire police that are essentially broken off as a special task force to re-examine several cases because they realized, oh shit. There's several innocent people that have been thrown in who have had falsified claims against them just because of their the color of their skin. Aye, I've heard about that. That's that's horrendous. I look, I've seen all the videos and 
I've seen all the videos on YouTube and TikTok that how the police treat coloured people different. Everybody should be treated exactly the same. Everybody should be treated exactly the same. And that's what's wrong in this day and age. That's that's if you have to, to go down the, the, the politics route, if you to go down to the United States, Britain and Germany and France and all the kind of NATO countries picking on Afghanistan and Iraq and stuff like that. Because they've got they've got wealth, they've got they've got stuff. They, they just go in and clear the place out. Look at the British Empire. Look at us, British Empire, right? Yeah. Look what we did. Look what we did to India. Mm-hmm. Look what we did to Africa. Then. Take Africa. After we went in there and we took their gold and we took their diamonds, their opals. Aye, they've still got loads left. But we take loads there, right? Mm-hmm. Because we're big and powerful. Right, that's what bullies do. Mm. And all this, this is this is this is what I keep saying to people: the world needs to change. But first, I think society itself needs to break down. What I mean is, is the governments. We need new governments before I think our friends can come down, and that's the honest truth. There is a probationary period in effect for that to happen, and the shift is taking place. But it's not going to be overnight. We're talking about the the just in this conversation alone. I know there's going to be a, some people that think, "Oh, it's not quite like that. It's not quite like this." The general common threads are the same. It's that let's face it. Well, it's like what Samuel Chung was saying. We need to essentially get rid of politicians because yeah. any of them that were halfway decent towards the people they were meant to serve. They somehow, one way or another, got taken out of a position of power. And sometimes, quite forcefully, look what happened to JFK. Look what happened with the... Get, get, that is weird you say that, because I watched look what the video. Hap- look, hap- well, look what happened to most of the Kennedy family. Yeah, I mean, I, there's there, there's the look, knowledge look, within you, there and the chat. No, where are you, Lewis? You were meant to be on. No, bad. You were supposed to be... Here, not in the chat. Here, I would. Just... We'll get you back again sometime, Lewis. We'll get you back again. It's like the third time he's done that, though, to us. I know, I know. That's that. The aliens are coming to get you tonight, Lewis. Don't bother locking your door. They'll just beam you. Out. All right, time to lube up the probes. Right, aliens, Galactic Command. Lewis is getting taken to the the strange uh, tachyon chamber tonight. Dakota will be standing with his plastic overalls on and his big bottle of lube. In fact, I think you shouldn't, you shouldn't use any lube for you being late. We're just I know, it's okay, Lewis. We're, we're, we're just, just, we're just teasing, Lewis. You know, only, no man. harm done. Um, Shit happens, man. I know. Computers, it's probably his computers probably went monkey or something like that. Right. Um, internet. There's been weird storms like that. As we're going back to the extraterrestrials again, I mean, the, the governments do need to fall. I'm going to say that. You see the UK, the UK's got to change soon. Uh, we are voting for a new prime minister soon. <laughs> and it's and it's all it's all backfiring. See that guy, Nigel Farage? You can't have talking about Yeah. He's parallel with Donald Trump, who he's decided to run for prime minister and everybody's voting for him. <laughs> and... I I think it's like we need to do something soon because it was like the world's messed up. I'll tell you something now. See, rich and powerful people shouldn't have run the world, shouldn't have run countries. Mm-hmm. They shouldn't have. I think I think we're needing to, and this is a, there's got to be a lot of folk out there saying, Are you mad? But I think we need to get rid of all governments. I'm not saying the one world government, I'm saying we should do like council kind of like. They should every year you pick a, a random. He's coming in loose. You're late. When we're eight minutes from closing minutes. the show, <laughs> eight minutes from closing the show, that's when you decide to join. You motherfucker! <laughs> that's that's terrible, terrible. How are you, Lewis? How is Sorry, the, how is the, can, the probing? Can you hear me? Is my voice? Is my it's coming through, can hear, yeah. Yes. Oh, I can't see. 
There we go. I can see you. There you go. Well, I was, talk- I was talking to a really um, interesting guy, and I got stuck on the phone texting, voice noted, and the next thing, I looked up at the time, and I was like, "Hang on a minute, mm-hmm. it's it was eleven. It's eleven fifty-two here, but I thought it was an hour before. We were supposed to go on. What time was it? Ten o'clock. Okay, or nine o'clock. UK time. No, it would be it be eleven a. It'd be eleven p.m. for you, and it'd be ten p.m. for me. Because my clock on this is twenty-two fifty-two on my computer, but I'm an hour difference. So it's because I'm. Don't you worry, Lewis. The time's on. It's, it's... The mental hospital. <laughs> Hope you're alright anyway, man. Sorry, sorry, Dakota. Sorry, I'm love, loving the beard, by the way, man. Well, thanks. And we're all, we're all rocking beards. This is the beard group, everybody. We're all rocking beards. <laughs> so anyway, you were saying, is everything good though, yeah? I haven't seen that. I had some good topics to talk about tonight as well. I was thinking of, but well, you'll just need to come back. You'll just need to come back I'll on again. To. I'm so you'll sorry. Come back man. on again. That's fine, man. It's absolutely I was, fine. Well, I was really worried. looking well, forward to it as well. We'll have to well, worry, tell man, him it's you... an hour beforehand, so he's on time. Well, mm. I did tell him that. I did tell him that. But here's the here's the here's the thing. If you usually you message me. Boost, I did message you. You've been usually messaging me like, like five minutes before and go, we're going on live in five. I didn't I see that message. I just, I didn't think, I, I messaged no, you an hour before he was, the show and I said, I'll send you an hour before the show. And that's what I did, I sent it. Did, you said, to... This is the link, I sent it too early, see you tonight. Yeah. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> it's me, mate, I didn't it's, read it. Don't be scared. If you see a visitation by a tall, bald man wearing a Caribbean shirt tonight in front of you, dressed as an alien, holding a probe in one hand and a large bottle of lube in the other. In fact, I don't think you should use any lube. <laughs> Let's just say, it's not the first time people have seen me in an alien abduction scenario. It's like it's been documented. Just saying. There you go, Lewis, and you're going to have a waking dream tonight. It's got to come in towards you, come to me, Lewis. Yeah, <laughs> with a sure bottle of you. WD-40. <laughs> oh, I've actually <laughs> ordered the WD-40 sign. The dirty <laughs> WD-40 sign for behind me. We'll see if anybody can notice it when I put it up. The light looks cool, man. I like the light. I just, I just look, this. look at this lovely, look at this lovely. See how bright this gets, by the way. Watch this. I'll see if I can get it to go bright. There we go. Uh, Look at that. Wow. That's a suntan material. That is pretty bright. You can't see the no. the logo is so bright. It's like drowned itself up. No. Nice. There you go. Aye. 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 Wow. So we've five got what five left. minutes of the show. Aye, five minutes of the wow. show. So in a nutshell, what's gonna to happen to the world, Lewis? And you've got four minutes to tell us. <clears throat> Interesting. Um I don't know. Five years, it's yeah. net zero, so, or mm. um, well, ten zero because it's backwards. Like few is worth backwards, worth is few. Sorry, so net zero would be ten zero. Ten to zero, what would that represent? My love will want about horses because I'm not going to the driver. I car. think yeah, there's gonna. I think there'll be something to do with with the outage of electricity for some period of time or something like that. As well as um, a massive famine, which is definitely going to happen because of the way they keep messing with the weather now. Um, that's only a matter of time. So yeah. stock up on water and uh, them kind of. Uh, well, I don't essentials. need to worry about that. <laughs> yeah, you don't need to worry about that with all the rain. Yeah. Uh, well, but um, and yeah, then then pumping stuff into the streams, I think, is just another cover up for the fact that the the. the the um, geoengineering is just polluting the the, the rivers really bad, um, and they're just oh, doing doing that stuff as well to like sort of oh it's just this and when really it's a mixture of that and the aerosols in the sky. So, um, but no, it's, it's it's all good and it's all good fun. It's all part of the experience, you know. Yeah, you've got to enjoy it all. It's by now. I am looking forward to the nuclear apocalypse. Oh, that would be, that would be actually pretty fun. <laughs> Be pretty fun. Go look at it in a good light, and you? you can't really. I don't know. I don't think that that would happen. To be fair, I think. No. 
Oh, if they're going to do anything, it will be um, on the scale which I said before um, years ago when they've done certain things, um, and it will be stuff that won't um, have a lasting effect on the uh, on the earth, as opposed to like dropping a nuke that will mm-hmm. like devastate. Well, it will devastate everywhere because there'll be nukes going off everywhere. You know, uh, I don't think they'll do that. I think they would utilize the technologies. Energy. They'd utilize mm-hmm. the technologies exactly, mate, and then that way they ain't got to do anything. And then all the people that just disappear, that will that, that to drop, they'll just clear them up like they did in, in the past, and then put them underground in these caverns, which they've got loads of skulls everywhere. I think you've seen the ones in France and uh, different places around the world. Yep. There's there's loads of them. So um, yeah, just the old world gets we get reset, and then the new world. But who who survives? That's that's the that's the question, isn't it? Who who Don't are the people? Worry. That... Us three will survive. We will yeah. keep humanity going. And we we'll go for... <laughs> humanity will grow from us. We'll be we'll, we'll, we'll become orphans. We'll go on the old orphan Aye. trains. Aye, <laughs> Dakota, the last man alive walking out, you know, and steamed on about you know, like the flashy lights and stuff. I mean, it's never there. I'm probably Dakota does have a few. I'm just, I'm just. He's got to be shocked when he wakes up in his bed and realizes he's got to be a child. All that money's just ranking up as we speak. You know, all that platinum gold bars and all that stuff. The platinum is all building up there in outer space. You know, you know, platinum gold gone. Aye, platinum gold. Was it? Was it? What do they use for currency up there, Dakota? What's their currency? Oh. Come on, they don't have like currency. Aye, but how do you? It's a digital credit. Bottle caps. Yeah. <laughs> Bottle caps. Yeah, you know, <laughs> turning the fallout down here. My God. <laughs> Aye, I can I, I can see it. The new your credit is running real low, now. <laughs> you know, don't you worry. Your wife's up there. The new she's spending it. She's wallpapering and she's buying couches and settees and TVs and I don't know if that's what they have. I don't know what the, what the women they space buy, but handbags and all that kind of mad stuff. That they, well, good to remember. Hey, like, like hey, this. hey, for the type of outfits she likes to wear. How close they hug that body of her. <laughs> <laughs> well, basically, you've got no money left when you wake up in your bed, then. Man, she works herself. Mm. That's all right. That's all right. That's a bit unfair, you know. They lose, he'll wake up in his pod. A big blob with 20 eyeballs, you know. <laughs> so I'll, about. I'll be, I'll be, t- I'll have tentacles. I'll go. <laughs> My big suckers and all that in the windows and all that, climbing a boot on the side of the spaceship and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, you know, how much you talk about going. being purple? You're going to look like those little cartoon look, aliens from the movie Home. I'm going to... Look, I've got nothing... Look, there's nothing wrong with purple women for outer space. Uh, so, I was, see, you're coming to bring it up this race, Cassie. I'll tell you, what, hey, race, I'll tell you what, before we go, before we finish, and they've got only one, one the last minute, there's something about women with... Blue jeans that is extremely attracting to me, and I don't understand it. I think it might be something to do with extraterrestrials, maybe. But the blue color blue, I don't know, I don't get it. But just the color blue, it just sets my brain off. I don't get it, and I've always been like that. So, but I know I've heard. Is that, does that ring any bells to you, Dakota? Maybe. No, no, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I'm in the purple game. Yeah. You, you're in a purple I, kind of. I've, I've, I'm kind of purple. I've seen the one oh, he's in too. Uh, hey, there's I've nothing wrong with three. You know, there's nothing. Look, 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 look there's nothing wrong with purpleness. <laughs> look, look, he's totally sure of, whatever floats your boat, man. <laughs> look, look, connoisseur of the alien worlds. You know, look, there's nothing wrong with that. You, you've got, you've got to go in good to go there, man. Good to go there. Go to the, there's a lovely star bar next to Europa. You can't even miss it. It's a great one. So, well, as uh, Dots puts out in the chat, to, to kind of go in your question, the Galactic Federation, the common uniform, there's often different colors that help represent the different species. And a lot of the ones who are more human like, they do tend to have sort of shades of blue. So, the guy who missed all of them do look pretty damn good in it. <laughs> Yeah, I prefer but, the purple ones. You, you've never loved until you've are... had a purple one. <laughs> you know you're missing. You, you honestly don't know what you're missing. 
Weren't you telling me that the girl you're seeing is in a walker? Oh, you still, you still got the... not. How did you get that? <laughs> I, I told you, man. I just, I just, I just get the state of the art walker. Fine, <laughs> walk at least four. It takes a like four hours. Uh, even the most state of the art ones eventually end up with cut up tennis balls on the bottom. <laughs> Look, I can't even help it if I'm a handsome looking alien. That's what I'm going to say. I, I might have 15 eyeballs and big tentacles, but come on. There's, there's, there's nothing wrong with it. See, this, this is the racism starting again against the purple alien women. And I, I stand for purple alien women. I would, I would vote for a purple alien woman. That's terrible. Hey, it's better than most of the politicians here. <laughs> uh, I get old Joe. Oops. I know, seriously, they, they got to do some sort of health evaluation. Here's a prediction for you. Any further political power, because just as a human... The what? Just, I don't know, just as a human being, what did something he say? right. I don't know what he says. No, no one ever does. I it's said, like in a prediction for you, yeah? hmm. three to four weeks, Joe Biden will stand down. He keeps, he, he looks like a robot, doesn't he? Do. I think, I think, saying, it, I think it, it keeps looking like a robot that like he's walking around like he puts his sunglasses right, on. Like, oh, I'll be did back. You see did you see the video they did the other day and they're all dancing like that? And he's just like, and I put the comment, like it's banned on TikTok. I put the comment saying someone's changing the batteries in the remote for Joe Biden. <laughs> and I get that get to doing his offensive content. I'm just saying, the poor guy is acting like something's happened to him, and there's something's haunting. Be el- this has got to be elder abuse keeping him in political office because something's not right. God help us if he ever needs to use the nuclear codes. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, I mean, I, we're sitting there and we're like, oh, who's that? And the one that, well, let's just face it, over here in the U.S., we're so sick and tired of our politicians. The one that a lot of us are rooting for is the one who's openly saying that a worm ate part of his brain and died. <laughs> Kennedy. Mm. Now, Not granted, in my some backyard. of the places he's, some of the places he's traveled to, I wouldn't be surprised if he's caught some stuff. But right, look, old Joe is not going to be in power much longer. I'm telling you, it'll be replaced by probably a woman. I'm betting. Mm. Mm-hmm. Because mm. he can't win against Trump. He can't win against Trump. Trump will win. Unless they do try and they push it the first time. Oh, they'll try and fudge it this time, but I think it'll go drastically wrong if they do that again. Mm. You can see, you see all these civil wars and all that kind of stuff. It could start again. Yeah, you know I mean, you know, the one thing I would have loved sure. is if Robin Williams was still alive. The type of material he would come up with, just dealing with this bullshit here in the states. You know, because mm. if I'm not mistaken, pol- let's, you know, election fraud, weird politicians from TV ended up in office. I think he did a movie, but like about that once, didn't he? <laughs> Mm-hmm. Man of the year. Mm-hmm. It's all in the it's all in the films, man. The the best one, the best one with your president the other day. There, like, I was I shouldn't have burst out laughing. It was the veterans thing. It was today with the D Day landings, and the trooper come into land. The soldier come into land, and the president just wandered off. Wandered away. Yeah. He just wandered away. <laughs> And he's standing there listening to like this, this like this sort of like black uh, dance sort of music right. sort of thing. And he's standing yeah, there, Ju- and like, and he's like, yeah, the Juneteenth thing. The only thing that was holding him there was all the pretty colors. Like I said, something is wrong medically with President Biden. Looks like a fucking robot. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if he is a dementia patient. Looks like a robot, man. I don't know if it's like, oh, I just don't know, mate. It's hilarious to see, though. It does make hey, me I, I enjoyed his speech the other day when he was talking about how his uh, son was in the, the Revolutionary War in 1774. And did you see that when he went totally off the thing and started talking about 1774 and his, how his son was one of the soldiers and stuff like that? It's mad. It's just the game he's in. 
Well, did you see uh, George Bush's floor, little Freudian slip the other day? No. Uh, it was a little over day. a year ago, but he was talking about, it was shortly after Russia's invasion of Ukraine, and he was going like, oh, this is a, the work of a diabolical madman who initiated the invasion of Iraq. I mean, you were Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. It's like, <laughs> oh, Georgie, uh, did you just confess to something? <laughs> it, it was, it, it was the like like prime minister that, what is your prime minister? What's his name again? Oh, I can't mind, but he's Indian or something like that. But never mind that. That's not the day with it. But, the the soldier one of the soldiers in World War Two the at the day hang says oh what 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 have you done without as a kid that made your life so bad and he went oh I never had Sky TV <laughs> no I've got an answer for this right I've got an answer for this now I've said this so many times these people's in part in, in power right I find that most of them are just chatting bullshit right but then some of them Mm -hmm. are actually under hypnosis and that's the conclusion i've come to because if you've got paid if you've got a person under hypnosis and you tell them a set of certain things and you're handling them you're handling that person doesn't matter what you say to that person yeah they can bullshit bullshit all the time but the way that he bullshit the way that he he chats bullshit and it comes out so natural points to me like it's a, it's a state of hypnosis that he's actually like expressing them, mm. them answers. Do you know what I'm saying? It's not that he's mm-hmm. super intelligent. Yeah, he's super, he's intelligent, but it seems almost like he's under sort of some kind of like hypnosis, man. That's personally from my sort of just paying attention to these people in power. I feel like they it's, are being handled like they've got handlers boy. and it's mm-hmm. just, they're just following yeah. what they're, yeah. Some of them are not under. Some well, you think that Bill is it Bill Clinton? Clinton um, you see him like sitting there, and he's under like some sort of trance or some shit. Do you remember? Mm-hmm. So I'm not swearing. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it, it, it's it kind of like points to, to that direction. You know, yeah. I might not be right, but yeah. I feel like uh, they've definitely got handles. They've definitely got handles. I've seen. I've seen with certain. Capitol Hill members in the United States coming out. Who was that? Who was that guy? What was his name again? He's, he's a senator. Remember, there was it was all our TikTok about somebody had like a remote and they beeped it at him, and he started talking. And then he they beeped it again, and he stopped talking. And he just wandered away, and folk were asking him questions as if he was there, as if he was just like totally blanking everybody. It's the, you see it's the woman pointing something. It's the thing that like, with the with the like. The fact that I, I need to get my friend on here who's a hypnosis, hypnotist. Mm. He need he needs to get him on the show because he's brilliant. Um, but he was explaining about, and you see him in his videos explaining. Once you've got them under this hypnosis, like you can throw anything at them, and they will still just like find a way of just chatting complete nonsense to what you like like you're trying to get an answer out of him or what did you not have as a kid or whatever you know like what you you grew up with in this family this whatever and he's going oh like a girl you know it was a, it was like a hard upbringing and all this crap he's coming out with whatever he was saying and then it's like when he's trying to make a point of the little things he had it because he's so like believing it so bad like where he's under i must well if he is or not probably but i don't know the way he believes it so much that he's trying to find something to sort of like, to like justify that kind of answer, you know? He's trying to think of something. And then he just says Sky TV. It's like, well, but then yeah. is it real or not? Did, did he have Sky TV? Apparently he did have Sky TV. So that he might just be completely chatting shit. Ah, he is. I don't know if Maybe you've seen time. the video where he was in the school visiting. He was vis- visiting a primary school. And yeah. they handed them a hammer. Did you see that one where they handed them a hammer to hammer a nail mm. into this block of wood? Go and everybody would use like hammer end, but he did they? He used the end of the hook, and he was going, and it kept missing. That's what he was doing. <laughs> and it was as if he was like a two year old. He didn't care what he was doing. Aye. He didn't care what he was doing. Mm. So either he's a complete idiot, right? Yeah. Or somebody has done what Lewis has said. Somebody's maybe did it to them. Mm. I know that with like 
the um, the musicians on the in the top level, they're all like controlled and handled and stuff. Like they have oh, yeah. multiple. We know they've got multiple personalities, and we know what that is. MK Ultra, that kind of like you know, mm-hmm. that's what it is. So Britney Spears is a perfect example where she's got multiple. multiple oh personalities. yeah. Yeah. perfectly programmed to be able to utilize them different p- personas by someone so yeah, it's just, it is. Yeah. it's like some of these presenters and sometimes a lot of music people like you're talking about Lewis how they'll start like twitching mm. you ever seen that yeah yeah, yeah. one eye will start like twitching off mm-hmm. and as, if, as if they're like taking some weird glitch in the matrix and then they're mm. all right again after that yeah mm-hmm. I've, uh, I've seen that quite a few times actually <laughs> And uh, yeah, with the old um, yeah, you're t- I know you're talking about you're talking about um, one of the the ones that you see was the Hillary. Is it Hillary? Can, was it Hil- not uh, not Hillary? Um, you know Lady Gaga that happened to the Lady Gaga that she started to like malfunction and I started to like start twitching like that. Mm. Just one the way. A lot of those treatments, what is usually done to these patients in order to yes, get Chris. them submit in that submissive state. It, it happens too much. You get th- those types of symptoms where they will start developing eye twitches, nervousness, mm-hmm. things mm-hmm. like that. Those are well-known symptoms of that type of mind control yeah, because it's done mm-hmm. too much and it's causing physical damage. Yeah. And then you've got um, the K West. Yay. That. I don't even remember to mention these things on his channel, but the Kanye. Yeah, but... mm-hmm. He's he was on the money for a long, long time, but then he kept breaking out of it <laughs> and then trying to wake wake people up. Then they'll put him under again. <laughs> it's just like he comes back out again and he's like a different person, then he's like sort of finds his way back again and yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll need to get you, you back on the game. Everyone. But you can't break. It. Oh no, you need to. Before need to we, to I know. But before we go, have you ever noticed that with the? And I can't remember where this is exactly. For maybe somebody in the chat can help me. But remember, there was a, maybe you came. I'm talking about Lewis. There's a while when a lot of the actresses, actors, not just the world leaders, pop stars, you name it, music stars, had mm. something wrong with their ankles. Remember that. Mm-hmm. They had like a, the, every one of them had oh, yeah, something yeah, done yeah, to yeah, yeah. Every yeah, yeah. one was seen with like a, a blue brace on their ankle or a black brace or whatever, but it was a brace on their ankle. And yeah. it was always the same ankle. Mm-hmm. I wonder what that was. I yeah. wonder what that was. Strange, man. They're on, they're on, uh, on, on tag. I don't know, mate. I wouldn't know really. What, would, what could it be? Um, I don't know. What could it be? Um, tracking. Yes. Could be an ankle tag like that. Maybe they yeah, were. Maybe they um, were like held under investigation for something because of some information that was like put out there, and then they all got sort of put on, t- put on like yeah tracking tags. So until they found out what was to be done with the information. Potentially, unless unless it was a secret society thing and they were all marked in a certain way. Yeah, or that. Yeah, it could be that. You never know these days. Mm. So, yeah. Dakota, do you have any? Do you have any news for this week or any shows you're doing this week before we go back to the, the back cave? Uh, we'll see what happens with uh, the latest developments. <clears throat> So, everybody, for coming, thank you very much. And, Lewis, we'll get Sorry you back on again, bit. man. It's, that's absolutely fine, man. We'll, oh, we'll get man. you back on soon. And, Scott, are you about to say anything before the end? The end is the besides, end. Besides, much love, take care, and see you all next time. Talk to you in a minute, Lewis. All right, man.
ladies and gentlemen, my name is Scott Franz. I am the CEO of the Quality Farmers. I will be the host of the show. Don't worry. This message that have come up to get ahead of any potential questions that you may have. If at any time you feel need to ask any questions feel free to leave them in the chat and i will get to back to them as soon as possible sorry just uh, checking on a couple things the refresh on my end to as it was playing the intro so maybe a little confusing right now but anyway, as I said, let's get started. We have a lot of material to get, actually get through. And like I said, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the chat and I will get to them at the end of the broadcast. First, matter of business. Upon some careful review, of how the last little while has actually gone. Chris and I have made a decision in regards to the main Bald and Bonkers show. Due to just simple life changes, as well as us kind of growing in our own respects, we had decided to turn the Bald and Bonkers show into sort of an a special event interview broadcast. The likely dates any interviews will air will be on Saturday night. It'll go from the usual hour to maybe three hours long. This was a move for us to be able to expand our horizons and be able to develop a little bit more into what we want to explore. We both have our own reasons for making this decision. This is not a breakup. Chris is going to still broadcast through the company channels. You may have seen his tarot card readings earlier today. And he has his own plans coming up for what he wants to do. And he is, as someone who's basically helped me build this brand, franchise, whatever you want to call it, he'll still get to do that. We're, we're still friends. This isn't the result of any arguing because there's been a few of you who have messaged me to address the fact that it was fairly obvious we were kind of button heads behind the scenes. And as well as due to the limitations of the show and all the different stuff we were both involved in, there's a point where it seemed like we were trying to overpower one another. This way... We both respect each other's space, what we decided to do moving forward. We'll still collaborate. We're still friends. You know, as much as I want to knock the guy's head in sometimes, I still think of him as a brother. But don't worry, we're not breaking up. For those of you who are probably looking for that to happen, you should probably just move on from whatever issues you've had with us. Because granted, we have allowed our emotions to get the better of us during quite a few stages. I mean, hell, who doesn't have something going on in their personal life these days, am I right? But this is about evolving. This is about becoming better. This is about about growing. So in the spot of what all of the Bald and Bonkers show, what all do we have planned coming up? Well, we have a couple new programs under development. We have France and Files, which will continue filming very soon, which will address my research into various different things, as well as the Intergalactic Gigolo show, which is more of an exotic advice platform, which will broadcast on both video and audio channels. 
More information will be made available for that. A lot of work is still needing to be done. It will be a pre-recorded broadcast. Several of these will likely be pre-recorded, but shown to potentially look like they're live, so that way we hit all of our platforms at once, and we still engage with the audience that helped make this happen. We all have Bald and Bonkers archives, which will repurpose some old investigation footage, old interviews, things like that, to help introduce some topics we've maybe done years ago when we first started this, or maybe even material from before we put together Bald and Bonkers, Chris and I. Did anyone just see that? Did it just look like there was someone standing right here? Right about where the eye is on my little tapestry here? Hold up. Hold up. Time to bring this back. <laughs> now you were going to see Dakota have some squirrel moments. Which over there so we can see it better. Anyway. We have intergalactic gigolo. We have, yes, intergalactic gigolo. I am not joking. We have friends of files, bald and mockers archives. And we also have documentaries. A while back, you and Chris and I started to discuss plans for a potential documentary exploring why people explore supernatural topics. And some of you may have felt a little bit off-putting when... A little bit off when Chris started to point out that making such a project will have its obstacles, especially for the lengths we plan it. This is not going to be just something we do for the YouTube channel. We have a film distribution partner, which will help us land to several different streaming platforms, which could potentially include Netflix, Hulu, Gaia, a lot of the major ones, Redbox, it will be made available on Bald and Monger's channels, but we want to be able to spread this message out as anyone who knows the paranormal field, especially everybody who's interested in it, knows. If they haven't noticed that quite a few of us have something going on mentally, either we're brought into this by trauma or we have some sort of mental condition that allows us to think the way we do when it comes to this type of phenomenon. You're not really paying attention, are you? Now, granted, it's going to take a lot of funding, and no set date is set in stone yet until we build things up. Chris and I learned from before that you don't necessarily want to bite off more than you can chew, especially with a project this big. And we also want to make sure we have these, this pro, the documentary as well as the accompanying anthology why we are supernatural to make it available for everyone willing to contribute. As such, we also understand some people are perhaps a little put off about writing their story for whatever reason. I'll be honest. It wasn't until Chris and I got to working together that I started to realize there's quite a few of us that, in this who may have issues with dyslexia and the current setup doesn't exactly help accompany those people. And that one's on me. So we're going to do some, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to open up a interview series to accompany this anthology. So people don't necessarily feel comfortable writing their story or, they want to, or they feel more comfortable, you know, speaking about it with someone, they will have that opportunity as well as there will be video segments that will help explain each page of the form, not to try to be condescending or anything, just because that's mainly the only way we can try to it's basically what's compatible with the services we use in order to put this stuff together. 
and I know there's some people that are put off about filling out forms and all that, but I personally want to make sure that there's as little confusion as possible. People know what they're getting into and try to make the process as easy as possible. Because the easier we make the difficult stuff, the annoying stuff, the quicker we can get to the fun stuff and present it in a way that helps portray the true beauty behind the individuals who have these experiences. Because let's face it, there's quite a few of us who have some pretty messed up backstories that led us down this path. Those of you who have followed me for a while know damn well. And there's several major figures who have not only had traumatic events in their life, but they've had some pretty nasty dealings with the public when they start to speak out about what they've encountered. And it carries a heavy toll. With this project, it also want, the goal is to also bring into focus mental health. There's going to be openings for charity collaborations as well, once a few more details are set in stone. When this company was founded, when the Bald and Bonkers show came together, it was because Chris and I didn't feel it was right for others to tell us how we should move forward with our work. We felt that there were individuals who, for the wrong reasons, tried to suppress what we do for their own motivations. That was our feelings at the time. Maybe we misinterpreted things because there was a a lot of emotional turmoil. That's a very likely possibility. I will admit that. But the fact still remains. There's a lot of people who need help when it comes to understanding the supernatural. And more often than not, when the drama stirs up, they get kind of put off and are willing to say, you know what, I don't want to deal with that. That's not, I don't want any part of that. Forget I even said anything. And these might be the people who need the most help. This is a project to reach out to them. So they know they're not alone. There's others out there who are having some sort of experiences. And sometimes just knowing that much is more than enough. They will need to learn how to use their own discernment to sort out who's potentially full of BS or as who's being genuine. Because honestly, there's a lot of times those lines are very blurred. And people may get something wrong for the right reasons. So they may have just simply misunderstood something. And in the pursuits to try to course correct, to try to bring awareness to those misjudgments, to those who are actually trying to cause harm with what they do. Again, it goes back to driving away people who may actually be willing to make some very incredible contributions, but are put off by the fact that people just look for more excuses to separate from one another. And that needs to stop. We can call it out all we want, but unless someone is showing that they have true ill intent and are purposely hurting others, all you're doing is just stirring the pot. But even then, if you don't show that evidence, show why you're being drawn to certain conclusions, you may accidentally lead people down the wrong path. So that is the goal, to try to course correct, to try to create a neutral ground. Bald and Bonkers was about letting people share their stories as they saw it. Get a discussion going. Everyone is on a level playing field. 
No one is higher or lower. The second we have that mentality, we may as well not even try. To help bring others in, we also have some new features that are going to be coming up on that are under experimentation, like potential 24-hour live feeds that may double as an advertising platform because, again, this is meant to be a network to allow people to connect, to share their stories, to get the conversation going. And there's going to be some times where individuals who may not be presenting the correct information come through. But it's also about discernment. There's ways to combat that without being combative. The more we look for excuses to hate on each other, the more we're holding ourselves back as a species. And one last little bit of news for those of you who've been asking, especially since you've heard the latest interviews. You are not insane. My latest book is almost complete. We had a little bit of an issue with uh, files getting deleted, but Dakota has had backups from that happening several times before. The book will cover my own stories as well as offer up a timeline of events as I uncovered them and as well as where I believe they may have landed. This information is likely to change over time because while I may have figured out quite a bit about my own story, you know, the only difference between me and some of the latest people that are waking up is that I just had a little bit more practice. We're all still learning. And I can go on and on about the various different topics, but why not split those up into the other shows? I will have more updates on release dates, all that information very soon. So you go to baldandbonkers.net. You will probably see a lot of those changes very soon. That is the official company website. It'll have all the links, all the merch, so all the links to social media, merch, all the various different projects we have, all the different books we've released. It's the best way to... You know, best way to find out everything that's going on with the company. And last thing, believe nothing you hear and only half of what you see. This is a quote commonly attributed by Edgar Allan Poe. And in these times where a lot of new information is coming out and Quite frankly, a lot of the trolls aren't even bothering to do some proper research for their attacks. They're just cherry picking whatever tidbits might set them off, what they think might set off others. Believe nothing you hear and only one half of what you see because you may not get the entire story. Much love. Take care. I hope I made sense through all this. And see you soon.